we can you can come in in a half hour. Like you're the last person introduced. Day. How is everybody? Welcome to episode 69 of Born During a Blumpkin. Um, <laughs> we're here at Inshallah Music Festival, which is in Fort McLeod. A beautiful place. Really, really hot. I'm nursing quite a sunburn. Um, yeah, we're going to do some shenanigans and, and some role playing and get bit by mosquitoes and spiders all during, which, <laughs> you know, we already, I had a huge spider on my leg earlier. It sucked. Not a fan. Um, yeah. I guess next up, introduce my co host, Kelly. <laughs> Did I unmute my mic? I did. I'm so smart and <laughs> uncoordinated. Oh, well, you get to pause it. They're going to autoplay. Just oh, hit the space bar or something. <laughs> Already doing great. <laughs> you did not tell me I had to do that. Because <laughs> I forgot you had to do that. Professional. This is why people have producers. Uh, I do think we should uh, address. Well, so first off, you address. can complain about the heat. But again, if we had done this at 5 p.m. yesterday, mm. very shady. I, I'm, the, I'm the one chair here that gets sunlight. <laughs> so that's going to be increasingly bad over the next two hours. How does, how does it look? I can't see, but the, the bits will become more and more deranged. It will be spicy. Yeah, like is the camera frozen? That's probably a good thing to look at if wow. you want to alt tab over. This is, uh, you know, this is this is how the sausage is made. It is not frozen. Oh God! When you said not, I was like, oh yeah, not moving. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right. Well, I do. Okay, so I do think we should address the elephant in the room because oh, I had I'm right this, here. I had. <laughs> I know. We are here to body shame you. This is actually, there's no show. This is just an intervention. We've been... Clever. Fuck. Yeah. We've been, uh, it's it's that baby weight. You should have lost it by now. Oh, it hits hard. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You've gained the, the, you've gained the, the COVID-19. Yeah. Oh, it sucks when people point it out. It's like, damn. The baby weight, man. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I, I received the critique at one point, or we at the show received the critique at one point. It's like, please, there's just no like, it's not enough like women or non-binary people on your on your show, and uh, I feel like um, it it should be known that <laughs> Callie was supposed to be hosting. Yeah. <laughs> My wife was supposed to be sitting in this. Yeah, seat. so she, she has close. unfortunately died. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She might actually be visible on the camera. Who knows? I'm um, literally right here. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's dead right there. Well, yeah. did, did you want to come take a microphone for five minutes and explain why you're yielding <laughs> to the patriarchy and just why it's boys chat? Because I'm a piece of shit. That, the mics can't pick you up back there when you yell. She said that she was I'm a piece, of, piece shit. of shit. She said that she was a piece of shit. You heard it here first. She fell down with the uh, festival-itis. Yeah. So those were my agenda items. Agenda items. I didn't bring any agenda items. Well, it's your show, so I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. entertain us. Entertain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we do have a smashing sponsor for this episode as well. Cal and Gary's. You can go down to your local co-op. Actually, I wonder is is Edmonton? Does Edmonton have Cal and Gary's? No. No, we don't Probably have co-op. You don't have co-op? No. And so when I come down to Calgary to try to shop at co-op, then they're like, you have a co-op number. I'm like, well, I'll sign up. They're like, what's your Calgary address? I'm like, fuck you. Like, I just want to pay less. <laughs> Give just me the deals. The I just want yeah. the deals. 
So, fuck co-op. Yeah, no. There's an official stance of the show. Fuck co-op. Fuck co-op. They're, they're, they literally have like a brand, like a, a local brand called Cal and Gary's. I, I really doubt that there's a person named Cal and Gary. I mean, it's got to be just a riff on Calgary. Yeah. But they, they had like, it was like a, what was it? A French French toast bun or whatever that you could buy or like a like a, a thing of bread. And it, it literally said crustier than Deerfoot Trail. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, it's clever marketing, but that does not make me want to eat it. <laughs> what an adorable little city. <laughs> what an adorable so cute. little shitty city. They're all cosplaying as cowboys, you know. Like, <laughs> imagine that. All right, what do we do first? What, uh, I literally, it's your show. Yeah, like, what's on your agenda? Can't keep saying it's my show. <laughs> well, you're the host. I am the temporary host. So, I mean... Willfully unprepared. If I were, if I were in your shoes... I don't know, like, I, I might call a guest out or, you know. <laughs> just, just softball that one in there. Well, we could we could also try to string that mic far back enough and throw it at Callie and just force her to participate. Force? Callie, would you want to force participate? She says no. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, okay, so I got to play a song to bring out a... Yeah, so you, do, you, you play the guest intro. We'll, we'll edit this out. <laughs> what? No, we're not editing this out. This is gold. <laughs> we're going to edit it in. We're going to loop it like five yeah, times. Yeah, we'll play it five times over just so that you make sure you don't miss it. Yep. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, you got to do a jaunty little dance to your intro song. It comes. But also don't kick the right okay. hand. Also, can you turn mic three on? The little push button on the bottom. I think so. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Alex. I part time, sometimes podcast Dungeons and Dragons. That's about all that I have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> Just out here at a festival, love my life. Yeah. I, I don't recall us giving you permission to plug anything yet, but sure, go <laughs> off. I'm the guest. Listen, <laughs> very important here. Your Honor, badgering the guest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Come on, man. <laughs> Co Co-hosting over here, does it immediately put me on blast? We we have done some role playing in the you know in the past. In the past. In the past. Yep. In the bedroom, you know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it really happened all over the place. <laughs> it was messy. We we all wear masks. Me, <laughs> me, yeah, me and me and me and Tanner love to yeah just 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 play around. Yeah. <laughs> it's very cute. Like like a gimp mask or like a surgical mask. <laughs> I mean, it really, de really depends on the day. <laughs> I, I've seen sides of Tanner that uh, no one probably wants to see. But that's probably not true. I'm sure it would make very good footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I've got all these webcams if you need, like, like we could we could bring all this set up to, yeah, shoot to your bedroom. Like, we've already uh, got the I already, I, already have, I already have a set up in his bedroom. He just, <laughs> he's just learning about it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but does it? You know, he knows. are the mics good? Like, are the, or are you just using like the webcam mic? Because it doesn't sound good. You're not going to get the big OnlyFans box from that. I did. I tend to make my own sounds for it. <laughs> I would. <laughs> I would wear a lapel mic on my gimp suit usually. So yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's for Callie and Tanner's home videos. That's when we're going to show their child what he's about ten years old, just to scar him real good, real hard, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, our uh, our fresh eight month old child is. Also, behind this veil, yes. listening yeah, to this debauchery. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm just waiting for him to get scarred for life. Does the child want to be on the mic? He's making noise. <laughs> he sounds like he's, he's making noise. not exactly the happiest being right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at this point, who is? I've seen everyone's faces this morning. Yeah, we had some rough starts. <laughs> it's just a bit, of, a bit of a rough time. Not quite so bad as me trying to get out of the river, but... Oh, yeah. Please. Can we talk about the 20 minutes it took you to get out of the river? I'm going to blame that on the flip-flops <laughs> and not the whole box of wine that i drank <laughs> i was i wasn't there for this so I, I would love to hear about this so i sat in the river for like a good hour just cross-legged in the cold ass river just pounding wine pounding wine <laughs> and then i tried to get up with my flip-flops on in the running river and literally face planted like four <laughs> separate times one of them was one of them was like a slow collapse <laughs> it was very like Unintentional, it was, like <laughs> trying to catch yourself yep. and ultimately ending up in it the was, water. It was very public. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, then uh, and then we continued with our lives, but yeah. 
I continue to, uh, yeah, not be a very sturdy person for the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, great idea. Episode 70, we should do it from in the river. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you know, given that we're on, currently on, I think it's episode 19, we could probably... I think 70 episodes is enough <laughs> at that point lead time to figure out where to get some like waterproof gear uh, that'd, be, that'd be fun like floating down a river like doing a bow float yeah, you, I guess you could do that I was kind of just making fun of the fact that we'd you know be sitting there with like a PA speaker and a bunch of generator power yeah, the water I mean if you if you brought this picnic table out to the like a shallow little river like that one truth and then make sure everything is sitting above like pick up a little could ambient work. river kind of little people you know, yeah. it's like white noise well we got a board with more than it. four inputs like you can uh like if i had one of those big like 12 18 input boards like everyone have a mic for them a mic for their dice and <laughs> while we're at it a cam for everyone's dice <laughs> and then uh yeah and then we'd mic up the river as well we should get a like, cam on every single person so you can see what they're looking at. Yeah. yeah. I mean, after yeah. we're done here, I could take my little, like, Zoom recorder and just take that down to the river yeah. and just, like, add that in post. And it will just... We'll retcon <laughs> it so we've actually been by the river the whole time. It's <laughs> just behind the edge of your camera. Yeah, we'll just re-record this part and just, you know, say, oh, yeah, we're in the river right now. Don't worry. Episode, <laughs> we're, episode 69. This is not a green screen. <laughs> we are actually in the river. People, uh, people do some crazy shit. Have you ever, I shared a video... Not too long ago, I know you saw the, a guy live streamed uh, an MMA fight being in an MMA fight. Oh, I, I think that was just a gag, right? Oh, Actually, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But he just like, got dunked in the face. And yeah. Just like, see all these people on Zoom reacting to it. They're like, holy fuck. Well, there's this trend going <laughs> around <the> where <laughs> there's like people in their Zoom meetings and they, they have their background like the automatic green screen stitching kind of thing so that it just puts like a, a bedroom behind you where whereas you could be in line at Starbucks. And it's yeah. actually like really funny because people are doing that in their Zoom meetings. So people have been taking that idea and extrapolating that into, yeah, like what if I was fighting a bear with a green screen, like <laughs> while I'm in the attached meeting. to my, yeah, well, no, there was literally, yeah, like an MMA fight. Dude was like yeah. getting the shit kicked out of him while he was in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> he we really like, hit the floor and it's like, whoa, Jesus Christ. <laughs> really fucked up with these weird ass tapestries because like these could just be green screens. I could, you. Yeah. Wow, man, they're, they're leaving so much on the table we can, there. We can be in a river whenever we want. Yeah, we could be in the Upside Down. I no, mean, hell yeah. <laughs> and speaking of being extremely wet. <laughs> Always. Oh, yeah, we've been calling out our next uh, guest. Is that... Was that... <laughs> sure. We talking about reading... Uh, I was talking books? about reading the erotica, but should our GM <laughs> come out for the erotica? Uh, oh, well, God, yeah, I mean, so. like, I feel like... GM should definitely be out here yeah, horny with us. Ready, we, we shouldn't be horny without him. Yeah, <laughs> we shouldn't be horny without him. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the the, the cue going here. Get the music. All right, let's get to the dance. Game Master Brandon. Actually, just a clone of Marlon Brando, <laughs> genetically and spiritually. Yeah, you know, I mean, this might do it. I think it's gonna be a deal, so I switch it I'm good. I'm good. Yes, if there's anybody who knows how to be both wet and horny, it's this guy. Especially right now. I the mean, sun, mm, yeah. it's got me all hot. I can, I can only do one or the other. <laughs> Sometimes you want to get horny, and it's just with the boys, you know? That's, That's why. I do. I mean, me, and, me and Brad, we, we kissed last night. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. Good on you, boy. <laughs> I just remember that. Yeah, nice before, <laughs> that's, that's like queer praxis, you know? You're just showing... Sometimes you just got to kiss the boys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was important. two girls there, too. There was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. So the, if you're the, not kissing your homies, no, no, how do you know? So it's, yeah, so, so the, the ratio was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> two, two girls, two boys. No cups. No cups. No cups. Not this time. <laughs> I like it. Maybe next time. So, okay. So as the host, how do you think this should work? We've got a stack of books. We've as got four people. Uh, how do I think it should work? I think we should... Find a lighter and start setting them on fire one by one. Right. I, mean, yeah. I think that's what they deserve. <laughs> think, well, actually, no. If it was a little cooler out, I'd, I'd be down to do that. But yeah, we need we need the opposite of fire. We need to put the books on ice. Yeah, yeah we can put them on ice. Yeah, can someone just like bring a blizzard? Both oh, from Dairy Queen, Blizzard right now. <laughs> both from Dairy Queen as well as the weather. Yeah, over anybody to us watching carbon. this, even in just. Y y can you go back find a way in to, time and yeah. put me in that cooler? Send it into the past. <laughs> uh, these books could use a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a cold shower after this. <laughs> I, oh, my God. I want to go in our tub so bad, but that's not a good idea. I need to turn it into a pool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Let's see if I can. Hot tubs are bad right now. I'm just gonna go break into Cassie's neighbor's house and get there. Oh. Well, as for getting soaked in these books, <laughs> um, it's so. What, all right, what's the uh, what's the format? Do you just so, you, do you put us up to reading them? Well, the format's different every time because okay. the it's, it's an evolving bit. It started with. Um, I asked, uh, you know, our previous host, God rest her soul to, Oh no. well, cause she was writing a fantasy book and I was like, you know, calling her out like, yeah, well, you're going to, you're going to read three paragraphs from your book on the next show. Right. And so she came and she just read like ogre erotica. Uh, erotic. <laughs> yeah, I think That's an attempt unique. to make me uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, oh, it has wow. backfired because now we have just done more. Yeah. So then we did we did one where we were all uh, in my basement and we made her write some like on the spot ogre erotica. Yeah. And that oh then that transitioned to so she, she had this book so we have read this one. The whole book. Wild for we cowboy. read wild for like the main from the main sex scene in it. Okay. Uh, no, we actually read from this one twice. So this one is just this one's just second decoration. Uh, it's, that one's getting lit on fire. It's good though. Like that, that's the Cal and Gary of erotica books yes. because it's like it mentions a calorie stampede by name. Like it's it's, <laughs> oh, it's really? local content. Yeah, is, that's it hilarious. is it written by somebody in Canada? Or? Oh yeah, it's written by somebody like from the Calgary area. That's oh hilarious. Gosh, who we don't want to put on blast. So I mean, like <laughs> I mean, why not? On the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? They decided to publish a book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surely they want some sort of. But notoriety. this person is kind of like known by the person, so we were kind of doing it. As uh, like, Oh, yeah, okay, okay. gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Um, yep. I too so, publish pornography about the stampede. It writes itself, really. Yeah, the stampede <laughs> does. It, the stampede is basically pornography. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, that's why yeah. they call it trampede, right? Yeah, trampede. Mm. Yeah, like maybe of a name maybe back. at some point we'll get around to writing our own Calgary Stampede porn. Maybe in time for next year. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I wonder if uh, uh, co-op corporate's going to sue you. Yeah, no, no, for, no. For pulling them out, no, be like they're oh, actually we're sponsored. They're actually bolstering. The, we had a stimulus package coming in from Cal and Gary's. <laughs> yeah. They're going to pay for the the book deal. So. We're going to get yeah. your. Uh, what, yeah. what, what, we're going to put a uh, surface to. to Ground missile just, against uh, Walgreens or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that oh, yeah, no, our buddy Eric, he's 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 unfortunately sponsored by Walgreens, and yeah, he decided to usurp our last show that we did, <laughs> that our lovely Tanner here hosted. I wonder how they're having. What well, wonder how the Shambhala's going? Yeah, what is that's it? also it's happening it's this sun, weekend? It's Sunday. It's There's true. still a night of music right yeah. now. I was like, well, I was like, oh, I miss Eric. Where is he? Oh, right, at Shambhala. At Shambhala. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's a thing that's happening right All now. Right, as well. So I wonder if anyone's written some Shambhala erotic. I haven't looked into it. Oh, I mean, that would write itself for yeah, sure as yeah, well. That's... <laughs> just a lot of descriptions of like, just like three day crotch stank and like. Or just, or just oh. a whole book about trying to find the orgy tent. And it's oh, never happening. <laughs> I found it in 2016. <laughs> they were not very inviting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know. It was ironic. <laughs> You'd think the Orgy 10 would be the most accepting place at the festival. I think they were just a little too full. Literally. A little too full. A little too full. <laughs> literally. Both in, 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 in mind and Is that what soul. I said? <laughs> no. That's what I heard. Oh, maybe that's what I said. <laughs> the heat. The heat really gets to you. So yeah. I'll pitch you guys on what these books are. And then, and then we'll pitch a tent. Yeah, <laughs> too late on that one. This this is what happened: is I walked into a bookstore, the We Book Inn on White Ave, and I was kind of like, I'm looking at the romance section. I'm like, well, there's like eight rows of romance, so I don't know where to begin. Um, but I, I did, so I did find another cowboy one. You know, like this is uh, called How the Cowboy Was One. And uh, you can just pitch a tent right off that cover. I, I I am illiterate unless it's cowboy. Yeah. So so I was flipping <laughs> through it, but like I didn't. Uh, yeah, I just the, I couldn't find a lot of steamy in there. So I eventually sheepishly went to the guy and I was like, Hey, like, do you? I, I need some weird erotica, like baffling erotica. And he's like, Yeah, we don't have a lot of that. I was like, Well, you kind of have like eight rows of this. And he's like, No, 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 that's romance. Like, that's romance, romance. And then there's erotica. Yeah. Because the like the romance novels tend to be all like implication, and the erotica's got the scene. So because, he's like, Let me of the show you. It could be called. Yeah. He's he was kind of like, Yeah, let me grab you some stuff that's like in the back. Um, Did he have some Chuck Tingle? I, here's what he had. So this one. Uh, I was really excited about this it. called the Plains of Passage and it's kind of like a I think it's like Neolithic shit 
So he used the phrase turgid caveman dong to pitch it. Turgid caveman dong. The oh man of the bookstore said yeah. this? God, yeah. I'm so aroused. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, this is going to be amazing. And like, Has he read it? <laughs> I dove into a bunch of these pages. I couldn't find anything. It's just people talking about, like, the wolves are coming. Uh, but, like, not even in that way. Uh, Alex flipped up the book and found a sex scene on his first try. But there's only one we found in here. <laughs> he, he is good at that. Then we've got... This one, this is like, this is a Globe and Mail best book. Like, this thing has won awards, I guess. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's like about these people, I think, going on like a honeymoon and they have really bad sex. Interesting that it would be a bestseller. Yeah, so it's, there's, I mean, it's there's like one yeah. main yeah. scene I've marked bad out here and it sells. is baffling. And then we have like, this book is like radioactively horny. Oh, this Radio is the one that you said is just like literally every Anne yeah. Rice, that name is familiar. <laughs> Does she make Anne, other books? <laughs> it says Anne Rice writing as A N Rocolard. So I think okay. it was like writing erotica under a pseudonym. Yeah. Because like, Anne, Anne Rice is a familiar name to me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the reaction I've gotten from a few people saying, like, oh, Anne Rice, that's like a whole author. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole entire author. author. Is Anne Rice just like a romance? Novelist, I and then think so. You tell me. We could Google this live. Yeah, on I mean, like so. she, she. I remember her from something like relatively well known. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, so right. I, I think the guy did explain to me. I think he was saying this was like before she got big, and then later was like, all right, I think someone's gonna ride these coattails. I don't know. I low key think she wrote. Did she write Fifty Shades? It's an American right? author of gothic fiction, erotic literature, and Christian literature. What, what, what did she write? Christian literature. She's literature. best known for her series of novels, The Vampire Chronicles. Ah, Books from it. the Vampire Chronicles were the subject of two film adaptations, Interview with the Vampire and Queen of the Damned. Interview okay. with a Vampire. Yeah, she oh, wrote okay. Interview with Vampire. She's a heavy hitter. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I was pretty sure I, remind, <laughs> I remembered her from somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to... Okay, I'm also going to Google something else that is now, I guess, my suggested homework for adding to that stack. All you got to do is just search the... Uh, the author Chuck Tingle. <laughs> Chuck Tingle. And then I'm just going to go to images, and I'm going to give you some suggestions here. <clears throat> oh yeah, we're going to get a full bookstore going. Um, we've got Gay T Rex Law Firm Executive Boner. Oh hell yeah! Sorry, this is by Anne Rice. No, oh, no this, is Chuck <laughs> Tingle. this is Chuck by Tingle, Chuck Tingle. Yeah. We've got pounded in the butt by the handsome. Sentient manifestation of my Twitch stream. Is, that, is, is, this, is this the guy who is this the guy who had that? Um, Are these real books these or just like joke real titles? Books. Uh, with with, a, with a like dragon lady and yeah. the fucking <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. It's there's he's got the the most insane titles to these books, and they're all just like totally perverted like just you know oh my god this tyrannosaurus rex like no stepbrother no you know like uh, stuff like that step, step tyrannosaurus step ladder, this, this one I can hardly read. it's a bird it's a plane it's the physical manifestation of my ridiculous reaction to uh, by sub sex what the fuck i can't even read those words are you, so tiny. are you illiterate it, it, now it, it used to be like like here, here's one. It's called Space Raptor Butt Invasion. It's literally you know. melting Tanner's brain to death. <laughs> I love you know it's good stuff. This then. American butt. Yeah, where's the, where's the one I was thinking of where it's just like just literally a drink? This feels like it has <laughs> big like lady. Sharknado energy where they're is, like, yeah. they're trying to make intentionally bad. I like. Oh yeah, no, he's self aware for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it it would be worth a giggle, I think. That's fair. I mean, well, we're gonna need erotica for every episode now, so like, yep. maybe I'll just open up a PO box. People can just mail me books or something because <laughs> that was pretty smart. Yeah, can find some good stuff. We'll, we'll work on that. <laughs> so this book, uh, make sure that they're by, sending you new well, copies. And my world was now an author, <laughs> Anne Rice. Yeah. Now this is this is crucial because like he was like, hey, I'm sorry, I only have part three of this trilogy. That's perfect. So like, dropping right in the middle. <laughs> this is not even the whole thing. This is the conclusion. Of the erotic adventures of Sleeping Beauty. That sounds problematic right away. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, it says it right in the name. Is Maybe. There, is there? I have a random. Is there a peen on the front of that book? Is there a peen? <clears throat> I don't. Oh yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Peen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Leave it right to Brando. He found it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find the peen. Spot a peen from 10k away. <laughs> yeah. You There's find Becca of, with her, with her uh, peen in her sitting tits. right out in the open, to be honest. <laughs> it is, yeah, the more you look at it, the more you can't unsee it, for sure. But <laughs> I think it's the only peen on there. But, yeah, so it, 
Uh, take, I a think good, her, take a good look. I think her whole bit <laughs> was, yeah, come on. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, yeah, you're, you're good that's, once that's over. I think her whole bit was writing like various like erotic fanfics to like established fairy tales. Like this is just the Sleeping Beauty series, I think. Okay. Oh, so she just writes erotica about nursery stories. That's what I remember <laughs> from what the bookstore guy was telling me. All right. like, what if the prince actually just fucked the this, shit this, out this of This book, bookstore guy was dance very floor. knowledgeable. Do you very think? knowledgeable. He had read all stuff of this? ready I mean, to when go. You a bookstore, like, let's be real, you're going to get bored. Who you're going to read fuck? all of the books. <laughs> Who just works at chapters for minimum wage and reads every book in the store? Well, he I was working. No, he was working at an indie bookstore. So. An indie book. Oh, indie, yeah. indie bookstore. No, it makes more sense for sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Who's uh, who's reading first? So, uh, really? yeah. Do you so, want to take a book? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. Like I don't know if these ones are even gonna, really going to be worth it compared to the other ones. Do we want to just stick with one book or? Does not matter to me. What do you think, host? You know, as the host, I believe <laughs> that we should each take a book, a different book. Well, yeah, we can spice it up. All right. I don't know. Okay. Well, then you're the host. You decide who gets what. <laughs> All right. That the planes of passage. That's yours. Okay. Um, the Anne Rice one. We're gonna pass that over to, to Alex here. Hell yeah. Um, Cover peen. Yeah, you got the you get the peen. The is, was that the cowboy one or is that the one we put? This That's is the, cowboy. The cow. I'll take the cowboy. I don't even know right. what's going on with that peen. Are they fucking? Are these angels? So the thing about the cowboy her? one, is that I did. To be I, 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 I checked this in the bookstore. <laughs> I think it was like forty percent of the way through the book. Um, there's some mention of like a boner incident, but it's what really a I got out of it was incident. so the characters in that book they have names that sound like horse names, so it's describing how horny she is, and it sounds like she wants to fuck a horse. Oh no! So <laughs> that's that's to me the oh. best thing I got out of because I flipped through that book a lot and I found no actual graphic stuff, and I guess this one's yours. So that scene I marked is like the main awkward scene. There's, there's two. That's the beginning and the end of it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's like oh, a third of that book is this one, like, honeymoon sex scene. A masterpiece. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you may have to do some digging in that yeah. one. This episode brought to you by Brandon reading 20 pages of a book. Yeah, and that book you've got is, like, <laughs> oh. you can flip to any page and there's going to be intensely horny shit. You do well, not that, have That's that. awesome. The ones we've marked, I think, are specific scenes. Yeah, we, we can just pass this one around, then. That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking, but... <laughs> Like, I, I don't the know, I can't... conclusion of the erotic adventures of Sleeping Beauty. Again, <laughs> dude, for fuck's sakes, <laughs> don't, everyone, don't, don't have erotica thoughts at all about someone who is sleeping, please. <laughs> is how the cowboy Consent was always won? good. This is a, it's a, it's a play on how the, how the West was won? I guess so, I yeah. Huh. And so I got a... It's a very strangely shaped book. It's very small. And stumpy. <laughs> Ooh, they're, they're ordering nachos here on well, this if, page. If someone else is going to read, can you mute me real quick just so I can adjust this thing? Sure. Uh, you're, um, you're one? Yeah. Yeah, Tanner, do you want to take us away with your book? Take us away. Well, I got to find something. I mean, well, you, you could always like could start do, it off do, with doing that. Well, uh, you got the easy one, right? Maybe yeah. if I, don't think you, I don't think you muted me. I don't know if I did either. No. <laughs> That's the listen. Is it the white button? I thought it was the little gray one. Maybe it's not a mute button. <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right. Just, well, I'm just going to make a bunch of noise. Yeah. <laughs> Eardrums bursting. Fuck okay. Just don't yeah. say anything really yeah. important oh, or interesting while I'm doing this. You should have absolutely seen the spider that I woke up to this morning. The thing was Ooh. like the size of my thumb. Dude, I had a... Okay, so years ago when I was at Inshallah here, it was, again, blistering hot. Oh, yeah. And I woke up to something crawling on my back, and I, well, I, was, I was sleeping without a shirt, and the tent door was open because it was too hot. Mm -hmm. So I just flung it off my back, and I saw a large spider, Yeah. and subsequently what seems to be 75 small spiders fly off its back Yeah. and scatter all around the fucking tent that I was sleeping in. So I, needless to say, I was not sleeping any longer. <laughs> And then, and then from the, from the last time that you told the story, I believe that it ends with, and then you blacked out and can't remember the rest of the story. <laughs> exactly. I don't know what I did after that. I don't know if I... There were spiders all over the tent, and then I fucking passed away and came I back. Think, I think they all ran back to the mother's 
back. That, I don't know if they know how to do that. <laughs> they definitely do. Like, I flung them over, and there was tons and tons of tiny little And then spiders. all of a sudden, there was and no they spiders. they all find their way back to the mother. I don't... Well, I mean, sure. <laughs> Whatever you want to believe, Tanner. I, you I did. That's I, true. When you got back into the tent, there was no spiders. I mean, well, you don't... Know, As a higher remember. authority on spiders than Alex could ever be, you... A whole strange <laughs> man. <laughs> you strange, strange man. What? Um, I also Where's can't... your degree of the spiders, Brandon? <laughs> I love them. I love my spiders. All right. You want them all to die in a fire. No, no, just when they're on my body or in my room. Or in the house or... No, 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 no. If they're, the if they're, they're, I mean, that's all right. If they're upstairs, you guys can deal with them. If they're in my personal... If they get into my personal space... They're gonna fucking die. <laughs> they're gonna die. I don't care. We ain't got no time for spiders. There's plenty of them out there. Uh, so you don't okay. have to eat the mic as much as you are. You can yeah. have a little space. All right. So Just arm tired. <laughs> so who's going first? Like, how are we deciding this? Should we roll for it? Yeah, let's roll for it. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Put actually. Dice over um, there. What? What are you pointing at? Dice. Well, I got dice right here. Oh, yeah. And Sorry, Ramirez is deciding in the way. Dice. Um. Yeah, did you grab did you grab dice for yourself yet? I haven't, no. Okay, well, there's a yeah, pile right. on the table. So we all just what we'll, do we we'll all just roll two? Yeah, we'll roll two. But I would grab I would grab four for the game, because then yeah. you can just like two distinct pairs. So when you're rolling with yeah. advantage or disadvantage, you can just tell yeah. Alex one yeah. pair and the other. Grab me a couple dice too, please. What's this wooden one with a thirty two on it? Uh it's like a doubling cube, but it's something to do with backgammon, I think. Like you just you just like oh, mark whether you're like you do when you do like a double or nothing game or something? I don't know. It's two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four. Yeah, it's a double. It is a doubling. Now I would love to just sneak that into a game and just roll and be like, yeah, I got a sixty-six. <laughs> oh <my> like, <laughs> all right. Uh, That's not how math works. Let's roll some dice. I'm so sunburned. All right. Well, I got an eight. You are a very red boy. I got seven. I also got eight. I also got seven. Okay, so the. People with eight go first. You guys roll. Are we, are we tie breaking here? Yep. Tie break it. I, I will not stand for this tie shit. I got ten. I got six. All right. Nice. Alex is going first. All righty. Gives me some time. I mean, I, it would have been. We're blowing our load on the best book first, but yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's talk. Once all you start of... reading this book, you may want to just ditch all the other ones. Let's so. let's talk all about <laughs> bastardizing Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't consider that it's going to be hard to read a book while you're holding a mic. Just should get Brandon right. to hold the mic in front of your face. No, it should be good. Okay. All right. <laughs> I reached down and felt its hard, hot length. <laughs> the wetness at the tip. You're not lying. <laughs> you're, you're almost <laughs> too beautiful, I said. <laughs> Makes you want to sneak out of this place with you naked, strapped over my saddle the way your sultan's soldiers stole me. I take you to the desert, make you my servant, beat you with the thick belt of yours as you watered the horse, fed the fire, made me supper. <laughs> it is fantastic. Yeah, like the whole book is entirely about like some form of servitude or another. Like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, definitely a kink. <laughs> yeah, it's it's full gas pedal on the kink, like oh, yeah. very specific one of just being like tied up and enslaved. Like that is. Very, Front very, very, very specific, but also, I mean, yeah. <laughs> His body quivered all over. His cheeks teemed with the color despite the dark skin. I could almost hear his heart. I moved down and knelt between his thighs. He was not moving a muscle now to resist me. His cock was bobbing. <laughs> but, <laughs> wait, but I was finished bobbing. playing with him. Yeah, what that cock do? It bobs. <laughs> it, it bobs. It yeah, so, yeah, very, very <laughs> specific. Oh, <laughs> it makes sense for a cock. The, 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 the harassers online, please give Bob and Vagine. It, it makes sense now. Give Bob and Vagine. It, it makes so much sense. <laughs> Give Bob, give, 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 give Bob, yeah. give a gene, and then just end it with you, you whore. <laughs> uh, all right, where are we at? I had to have him now. Then the other spices might be mine. What does that even mean? Punishing his buttocks. I, <laughs> wow, that's the? some that's some crisp literature right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some very confusing literature. <laughs> uh, oh, if this clarifies anything, the narrator is not Sleeping Beauty. 
okay. I mean, like, well, yeah. I'm wondering what the context is in terms of the sleeping of the beauty. Yeah, is, is it this, Belle? Is her name? So, is, is this, no, that's Beauty and the Beast. Is this? Oh, is, 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 beauty is, do, um, do you want me to give you the rundown of is what? Is this I've, a dream? Do you is want, she awake? Do you want me to give you the rundown of what I've figured out so far? Sure. So, I figured out nothing. Like, so. the, 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 there's like a prologue which tells you what happened the first two books, which is helpful. And oh yeah, I guess this is the conclusion. Yeah. So I don't know how much this beauty. And again, she doesn't get a name at all. She's. You, you're not on mic, Callie. If you want to contribute, to that, here she is here. wanting to fucking contribute. Yeah. I, I should have. Well, okay. Wait. Yeah. So you say what you're gonna say, and we'll yell it back to the microphones. Callie, you wanna you wanna fucking say something? There's room next to me. Come and dip in. She says there's no indication that Sleeping Beauty is a she. Well, it, it, the, it is gender neutral, I suppose. Well, in, well, you know, in this book, she's called Princess Beauty. Okay. okay. So it's it's they are being given a fe, uh, femme coded title, an right. honorific. Fair. But yeah, is not given any kind of actual name, and is referenced in the third person because it's a male narrator who I think like does fuck and also I don't think she does any sleeping like this is so far post <laughs> well I mean like this is the conclusion also again how do Existing you beauty. how not, does one write full three full books of this <laughs> well because you get into other stuff and that's my point is that you're looking and you're like okay I'm waiting for this beauty character to do some fucking I think I found like one page where she does but are these just other people fucking yeah it's oh, mostly okay. gay sex oh well <laughs> it's a story erotic story of sleeping beauty mostly featuring two unrelated the, dudes fucking the, the cover of the book literally has a guy and a girl fucking on the cover. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm not, I'm not so convinced because it looks like there's another ball sack behind that peen. Well, I mean, I guess so, she just has long hair. So that's but. the thing is, I maybe <laughs> she did a lot more of it in the first two books, but this one, as far as I can tell, is mostly gay dudes. I think there's a gay three way in there, so there's so much, so much not beauty in there. <laughs> so much, so much not beauty. Yeah, just, just sleeping. I guess. No, <laughs> just sleeping with each other. Yeah. All right, let's go. One more paragraph, and then uh, one you guys should take the reins. I'm struggling to find anything worth reading in here. Uh, yeah, that's what I was warning you about. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. Can just, you can just go nuts on this one. He moaned, and his eyes flickered like two fires as he glared at me. I felt, <laughs> I felt the little anus nice and dry, <laughs> and I touched my cock. Quality. Touched it for the first time in all these days of torture and smeared the moisture seeping from it all over the tip until it was very wet. <laughs> and then I went into him. <laughs> that's yeah. that's just like bad writing. Well, we were talking about it this. It was a very wet. You saw like Donald Trump. We were talking about this race. on the beach, right? And we were kind of the conclusion, like, there's no way this lady has had anal sex because she's like, oh yeah, that little bit of pre-cut, <laughs> that, that's all the lube they use. That little anus. <laughs> like Very specifically little anus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tiny anus. Okay, well, we'll finish the we'll finish the page here. Sure. He was tight, but not too tight. He couldn't lock me out. <laughs> he moaned again, and I went deeper through the ring of muscle that scraped me and maddened me until I was well into him. Then I pressed down on him, forcing his legs back against him until he bent his knees over my shoulders. All right. <laughs> and then I started driving in him hard. I let my cock slide almost out, then plunge forward, then almost out again. <laughs> and then I woke up, I shot on missed again, and woke up with a popsicle stick in my mouth. We'll see if anyone gets that. <laughs> I sure didn't. <laughs> Game Grumps, it's good stuff. And he sighed against the keg, the silk becoming wet. They have a gag again, apparently. They didn't, didn't catch oh, that part. the keg. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little keg going. I'm a bit of my screen now. You do, like, you do a keg stand while someone is, like, jacking you off? Or? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a name for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something that Tanner has probably done. Well, I, I will now. <laughs> it's on my list. Well, that reminds me. We did forget to expound on what Born During a Blumpkin is all about. <laughs> born born a During a Blumpkin. <laughs> yeah, that's all I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, like, like, how does that manifest? Oh, was, like, what oh, the... was, was that your well, title of the of the show we're the currently yeah, on? Yeah, that's okay. the show we're on. That's all right. Gotcha. You, you didn't know that? Well, well, well <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> well, listen, Tanner, my hand grows. It's gonna for sound a so bizarre because <laughs> the mic did not pick up the people walking by yelling <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We also have not explained why people would be walking by us saying no, Merry Christmas. We'll just leave it at that. All right. <laughs> yeah, the ambiguity is what makes it fun. As you can tell by the snow surrounding us right now. Yeah, it's it's December. Definitely not July. No. All right. So, listen, my hand grew up for his cock. 
found it, started stroking it in time with my thrusts. This is what you deserve. I said through my teeth, this is what you really deserve. You are my slave here and now, and damn the rest of them. Damn the Sultan the entire palace. That's... So that's gotta, that is one page, guys. I think I, I think I need to I think I need to step away for a second. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. You can just go behind the tent here. <laughs> well, no, I've got my I've got my tent closets. For yeah, that. I've got my yeah. stuff over there. Yeah, no, 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 I've got the tent closets. That's what that's for. Yeah, me and Taylor were, were talking about me and Brandon had to take turns masturbating in the tent. <laughs> we need to get our three times a day in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's difficult when you're sharing a tent with a homie, but I mean, two out of three done sitting here. Sorry. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Real quick, real real quick, like. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm having. Yeah, just 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 read a page from this, Tanner. Just go. No, just I, go okay. Nuts. So I did find something in this book that, is, like, at first glance, I was like, oh, I found something. And then, I'm not even reading the part that you gave me. I just realized that I'm not. I'm well, not there even two. The like, like I said, I marked two of the like notable gay sex scenes. Like you're very like I marked just part of that scene. Yeah. But <laughs> any page in the book, you open it up, it's just impossibly horny. So I was like, I don't need to mark this book. Yeah, no, so I, I found something in here that, like, sort of started to sound like it was leading towards, like, sexiness. Oh, thank you. And then it... Yeah, I'll just... I'll just read it. Just... Yep. We'll just, we'll just get into this together. Um... Yes, fuck you, Callie. <laughs> I got the Oreo. <laughs> yeah, so it starts... Her breath slowly came back to her, and she turned her head to say something, but felt a prickling sting shoot down her back. Something was poking her in the neck. She groaned. Winced. Medic! Do we have a medic on site? <laughs> I like. I was reading it and I was like, "Oh, I found something." And then it. You thought it was a medic like a and I was like, in the neck. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Well, that's, I was so that's wet. everyone's favorite part of blood. <laughs> you like the way I'm digging your neck. This the the cover of this book. I'm just gonna put this in front of the camera, guys. It's a uh, very <laughs> ripply, robust cowboy. Yeah. Sure. At least at least he should be fucking with a fucking a belt buckle that just drives me mad. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't you like his dick resting on your neck? <laughs> his prick. Uh, I don't know if the guy gets laid in this book, which... I was misleading. There is a boner incident. I remember that phrasing. It's it's in like... A boner incident. That I believe was it's the before phrase. the halfway point. <laughs> I think so, yeah. And then there was There's a boner incident. There's this weird incident. trend with a lot of like mainstream romance and erotica where like they won't they will use the weirdest words like they have to be like a member a shaft like yeah 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 and, you gotta and, get the synonyms going whereas this but they love to use the word boner and like it's the least erotic word yeah true like it's like a, that's a, that's a word you learned as a child right that's that's like <laughs> dude, boner. boner boner is a, a fucking banger of a word when you're in junior high yeah, yeah. god like beavis and butthead like just there, those were the days. The stupid tapestry just catches in my head. It's so annoying. It's, it's, it's part of you now. Yeah. <laughs> it was protecting from the weather. Melt in sure. Oreo. All right, so that's your section? You're done? I believe so because I can't find anything else um, right. that looks even... Like, there's words like this. Just, I keep looking, like, scanning the page. I see the word sultry and, like, you know... All this other stuff. And then it's just, like, the, the most boner. mundane, non-romantic yeah. shit. Like, is this a romance novel? Yeah. Is it Have you seen section? the cover? Uh, return to New York Times best-selling author Lori Wilde's beloved town of Cupid, Texas, where wedding fever is in the air, and two best friends discover that sometimes the perfect match is standing right in front of you. So what, do they just get fucking married? I guess so. <laughs> like, Have you ever seen a book? That's what the guy was trying to warn me. He's like, that's not erotica, that's romance. And like, oh, uh, okay, yeah. I, you knew what I was talking about, I guess. Yeah, I grabbed it because it was five bucks, and I did like the part that I never got around to marking about how it sounds like she wants to fuck a horse. So maybe I'll find that part later. Have we ever? Yeah, we, have, has anyone ever read a book that is not a New York Times bestseller? There's a lot of them. So there's <laughs> this. Read, someone showed me this. Uh, well, no, I, I saw this. Uh, Globe someone, and Mail best book. Yeah, not a New ever. York Times, just Globe and Mail. So <laughs> that's Canadian fiction for you. Where it's like, yeah, you you know, it, it's like oh, I won a yeah. Juno award. Like, okay, buddy. I mean, it does say <laughs> on the back. Good for you. Uh, New York Times, number one national best. Oh, there, there you yeah. go. So, Kelly, you were there saying. You yeah, so there, I saw it was an article or a Twitter thread or something where uh, someone was saying, like, a New York Times bestseller just means you ever cracked their charts. And it's, like, not even the top 10. It's, like, the top 100 mm -hmm. yeah. ever. <laughs> right. And like so you were on the list. Marketing pushes you to get that, like, that little yeah. tiny spike. And then you're just. It's, it's like being, like, hey, like, billboard charting artist. Like, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they showed how easy it was to get because if you write something, um, like attuned to like a micro genre, like I don't know, like like uh, Disney or not Disney, like but like um, 
What, what is it? A fairy tale like fairy, erotica? Fairy tale erotica. Yeah. So if yeah. you if you find something that is a really seldom touched genre oh, so that is the on their of list, that genre. Yeah. So oh. you can you can write something inc <laughs> uh, incredibly like you can write five pages um, and put it in a extremely obscure category and self-publish it on Amazon and just manually buy like 10 copies of it, you'll get on the chart for a day, and then you can say without lying, you're a New York Times bestselling author. Yeah, I, know I might do that to do it. Yeah, it means very little. Yeah, yeah Tanner, write some erotic up. I, you got plenty rocking around in your brain there, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I asked me about keg stands and getting <laughs> jerked off. If you write <laughs> keg stand jerk off erotica, we will read it in the show. I promise. I mean, Chuck um, Tingle's pretty successful. I'm, we can follow in their footsteps. I want. I want to hear. I want to hear the full tale of the uh, the candy thong. I think the oh, world needs okay. to hear that. The motion. Well, you want me to tell it now, or do you want me to write it? In the, I'll, I'll write it. Yeah, we'll write, write it. it. We'll write it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wish that was more erotic than it was. It was mostly <laughs> just look hot because it was like forty degrees. I mean, you were in Tanner and having everybody nibbling candy off of. A, I, I saw. A I saw region. Tanner's junk plenty. It was fine. I think Dietrich, Actually, and, Dietrich and Brett were rocking around as well. I, True. Brett was very upset. He's like, yeah. I want for, for, people to see my cock." For context, right. I walked around a music festival with. Like a candy thong and a candy bra on. Uh, actually, Callie and I did together, and we were trying to compete to see how many people would eat the candy off us, and like who would get could get the better numbers. And for some reason, I was kicking the pants off Callie, <laughs> and I, I don't know why. I think they were just like afraid to like you know whenever people came up to us, they were just like afraid to go for the you know the girls' boobs or whatever, like the bra. Uh, but they're really into your dong. Yeah, well, the, 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 were they snack. eating it off your your bra yes, or your panties? No hands, and eat a piece of candy off. So you had to, like, get down and, like, bite one off the string. Did anyone eat off of either of your panties? Yes. <laughs> either off the jug. Okay. I, had, I had probably close to it. Well, I was somewhere around 10 or 12 people. Tanner, you need to right tell off, a story right about, off the shaft about the guy <laughs> who was really fucking all about his cock. Oh, yeah. There was, there was a guy. We, so we, we, we amassed a troop. We brought enough that we, like, suited people up, and we decided to go on, like, a little candy thong brigade, we called it. And we were walking around just trying to get people to eat it off us. And this one dude ran out of his campsite and, like, came right up to me, and he was like, you know, like, he was just, like, chest, chest puffing. And he's like, you think you're fucking, you know, you think you're fucking hot shit? And I was like, what's going what? on here? I thought it was a bit. I, I thoroughly thought it was a bit because he was like all not, he was just unhappy about the fact that we were walking by with our asses hanging out. And then he, uh, he just pulls down his pants and like, like a whole grapefruit fistful of his scrotum. <laughs> Like he had, I don't know if he had grapefruit. elephantitis. He, it was like the size of a grapefruit. His testicles were engorged <laughs> with, I don't know if it was a tumor or what, but he was like, fucking look at this. And he just like, he's like, look at my testicles. Like, look at how big they are. And I thought it was a bit still. So I kind of laughed, which made him really mad. And then when I realized he was getting really mad, I was like, Whoa, this is fucked up and weird. I'm gonna walk <laughs> this away is now. Funny. And I'm I gonna just, walk off with my candy thong. I was like, that's that's cool, man. I'm I'm gonna go back with see you know, hang out with my homies over there. <laughs> and I just kinda walked away and it was I don't know. It, yeah, it was, it was, it was just the weirdest really thing I'd seen in <laughs> my life till to that day, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the weirdest thing. So I read every time I tell a lot of stories, every time you tell him like, is that even fucking real or is that a fever dream? <laughs> no, he he looked like he was just had been wilding out for days and I don't, I don't know if he knew what he was doing like made sense but he was pretty confident in his gesture he was he was definitely doing it whatever it was he was yeah. doing it was like little man syndrome but in the opposite direction he's See, swollen ball giant, syndrome. giant ball yeah syndrome. we could put we could put that on five pages of paper and that story could be a new york times bestseller there you go oh, we, we got what there, category is that keg keg stand and masturbation <laughs> Guy with giant balls, good to go. Dude, Tanner's it was probably the biggest book. balls I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, props to the guy, but... I mean, well, yeah, I mean, like, g good for him, I guess, if it's yeah. not a disease, but it probably is. <laughs> and I had, I was walking around with, like, a bouquet of daisies in my butt crack, mm. and I'd walk into people's camps, and I'd just, I'd be like, you guys want some candy? And then I'd turn around and be like, you get a flower. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it was... We were young. <laughs> we were young. <laughs> yeah, about, you well, say that like about you wouldn't six still do years that. Ago. No. I yeah, we're, yeah, I'm normal now. <laughs> I feel like I was in better shape. I mean, we started out this episode talking about the the baby weight. You know, I think I think, I think you were podcasting out there too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did a lot of shit back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I can see my sunscreen over there. I'm gonna go you get it. See, yeah, if you wanna, <laughs> you wanna you duck out, if you wanna just right like completely for, bail and be a, a total fucking failure, then I'm you can get up from the seat. <laughs> Ten feet. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend is going to go put on sunscreen while sitting in the shade. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so whose turn is it to read erotica? Um. Like you, like. you know what? I'm going to grab this book while <laughs> while he's relinquishing yeah. it. So I will say this. If you don't want to commit to that whole chapter. I'm not committing to the whole chapter. Because the I've, ending I've... is the best part of that passage. Okay, I'll read the first paragraph and then I'll read the last paragraph. Yeah. Lo lose the context to just get all the... When Florence reached the bedroom, she released Edward's hand and steadying herself against one of the oak posts that supported the bed's canopy, she dipped first to her right. Then to her left, dropping a shoulder prettily each time in order to remove her shoes. These were going away shoes she had bought with her mother. While, <laughs> bought with her mother one quarrelsome rainy afternoon in Debenhams. It was unusual and stressful for Violet to enter a shop. I don't know who either of these people are yet. <laughs> they were soft, pale blue leather with low heels and a tiny bow at the front, artfully twisted in leather of darker blue. The bride was not hurried in her movements. This was yet another one of those delaying tactics that also committed her further. She was aware of her husband enchanted gaze, but for a moment she did not feel quite so agitated or pressured. Entering the bedroom, she had plunged into an uncomfortable, dreamlike condition that encumbered her like an old-fashioned diving suit in deep water. My brain is so mangled when you said gaze, I wasn't thinking G-A-Z-E. I was thinking gays, as in, as in the gays. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, half of this paragraph is one sentence. There's like five commas. I, I, why is the writing also shit in these notes? I mean, that's kind of the point. Hey, this, the cover said it's a masterpiece. It so says, it says a masterpiece. It. It's from what's the book from called? a what's novel called? by it's the author of a On Chisel Beach. On Chisel Beach. Hmm. Yes, Chessel. Ch 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 Chessel. Is it Chessel or is it Chisel? Also, we're all illiterate. Chessel. It looked like Chessel to me. <laughs> Chiseled beach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's that's fast it forward. Actually, it here. does say chessel, doesn't it? You can you can tell that we are we're all physical forms out here of the of the of the male physique. So the very the, chiseled. The, the context is she has blue shoes, and also that's the context. Yeah, she has blue <laughs> shoes, and also is I guess getting married. Yeah, this is their honeymoon. I think this is their honeymoon. So like okay. the the general, I think, like conceit of the book is that like this is a set in like. Like the 50s or something, like it's kind of a like pre-sexual revolution kind of thing. So they don't know what they're doing. And so it's describing like the awkwardness of their honeymoon. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This I'm is the first time that we fucked. We couldn't bang until we got married. <laughs> Here, wait, can I just see real quick? Oh, I picked a wonderful place. Oh, you, just... you found the part. Uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> oh, guys, what a journey we're like, on. I would start right there. What a journey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon, get, get her going. No, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like going like to start right there because I like. <laughs> no, but like the context of <laughs> that's what. <laughs> <laughs> trust okay. me, trust okay. me. I read the whole thing, the whole, the, the whole, the whole section, the whole chapter. Kelly's yeah, like, I've, I've read this book like four times. I, hey, <laughs> I, I prepare, you know, All like you prepare. We're like, yeah, things are getting spicy. She found his testicles first, and not at all afraid now, she curled her fingers softly around his extraordinarily bristling item. Oh, she, <laughs> she had seen item. different forms on dogs and horses, but I never quite believed could fit comfortably on a adult Who wants humans. to fuck animals in these books? I think she's just saying he's hung like a horse. I mean, Which, that's to fair. stop for a second, apparently. Or, apparently, or also a dog. Or also a dog. <laughs> apparently, considering the size of a horse compared to a man, Tiny we, have, we have roughly, like, the average human dick is about the same size as, like, comparatively, to a horse dick. If you were to scale us Bigger, up to the size actually. of a horse, we human are all human, 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 human it's not hung proportionally like a horse no, it's hung literally like a horse human, cock human on your body have the largest yeah. penis size to body of all primates and don't uh, maybe you do you know. speak for yourself buddy <laughs> no one wants to see that right now no right. <laughs> drawing her fingers across its underside she arrived at the base of it's... his penis which she held with extreme care they actually said penis for she had no idea how sensitive or robust it was she trailed her fingers along its length, noting with interest its silky texture, right to the tip, which she 
lightly stroked and then, amazed by her own boldness, she moved back and down a little to take this penis firmly about halfway long and pulled it down towards a slight adjustment until she felt it just touching her labia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, there's like five commas in there. I'm, this guy needs to, he, I am dissenting. so hot right now. The run-on sentences are a little, a little much. <laughs> You're doing well. Oh, my God. It's, it gets so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> How could she have known what a terrible mistake she was making? Had she pulled on the wrong thing? Had she gripped too tight? He gave it a wail, a, com a complicated series of agonized rising vowels, the sort of sound she had heard once in a comedy film when a waiter, <laughs> weaving this way and that, appeared to be about to drop a towering pile of super plates. That's so specific. <laughs> Wow. So, <laughs> how, do you, how do you think that line up? <laughs> Let's all try to make that sound, shall we? What do you think Man, that sound I've only heard, I've only I've only, heard, I've only heard this sound one other place, and that's when I was at Boston Pizza watching this guy fuck up a bunch of plates. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, this is the, this is the real heavy hitter here. In horror, she let go as Ezward, rising up with a bewildered look, his muscular back arcing in spasms, emptied himself over Empty. in her gouts. In, in her gouts? In her gouts. In vigorous but diminishing I that's quantities. I can show you the word. I'm, I'm, I know that it exists. I don't. <laughs> gout, we gout gout again. That is such an amazing. <laughs> in horror, she let go as Edward, rising up with a bewildered look, his muscular back arcing in spasms, emptied himself over in gouts in vigorous but diminishing quantities, <laughs> filling her navel, coating her belly, thighs, and even a portion of her chin and kneecap in tepid, viscous fluid. Why does it go from chin to kneecap real fast? <laughs> well, because he's a. Fucking baller. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's this guy who's not a baller. Chin the knee cap. I got, I got some on my chin. I got some on my knee. <laughs> Vigor. What's it? Vigorous but diminishing. Vigorous but diminishing. Yeah, in uh, vigorous but diminishing. Yeah, qualities. I gotta go jerk off. Oh, incredible. <laughs> yeah. All right, see, see you later. That is just my favorite. Are, are you going to go get your living cum? Also yeah, known maybe. as your child. <laughs> 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 it's out of Tanner looks at his child. He's like, "I made this." Are you gonna, are you gonna keep going? Sperm. I'll give it. I'll, 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 a couple more sentences here. Let's let's finish off this man's orgasm for the audience. Yeah, that, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was a. You got, you got to finish. Exactly, you got to finish. It was a calamity, and she knew immediately it was all her fault that she was inept, ignorant, and stupid. She should have not interfered. She should have never believed the manual. If his jugular had burst, it could have not. It, it could not have seemed more terrible. How did we get there? I don't know. <laughs> How typical her overconfident meddling in matters of awesome complexity. She should have known well enough that her attitude in rehearsals for the string quartet had no relevance here. Well, holy fuck, I cannot follow. <laughs> no. I think she goes on to, like, mop on. herself up with a pillow, too. Like, it's just... Like, what the fuck? Oh, Dude, what a now, I don't often what? read books how did, how did we get to did something about his jugular exploding yeah. to a string quartet? No, I, I, I question the status of this book. <laughs> I question the status of the mind of the person who wrote that book. It, it kind of feels like they were trying to write, like, three different things and just edited them all together. <clears throat> All right, should we do one more passage? We're we're yeah, we're, we're running out of uh, time in the interview portions. So. <laughs> yeah, we are. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, three minutes left. <laughs> All right, I think it, I think we started a quarter after. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Uh, all right. So what was? I, I haven't even really looked at this part. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna start here. So this is cave people doing something. <laughs> just cave people stuff. Yeah. Do we know what uh, what era this is? What is like? What does the back say? Uh, <clears throat> Jean M. Auel returns us to the earliest days of humankind and to the captivating adventures of the curious heroine called Ayla, with her companion John Delar 
Ayla sets out on the most dangerous and daring journey, away from the welcoming hearth of the mammoth hunters and into the unknown. Their odyssey spans a beautiful but treacherous continent, the windswept grasslands of Ice Age Europe. So there you go, Ice Age Europe. All right. Ice Age Europe, all right. <clears throat> Casting the bold pair among strangers. Soon, soon, some will become friends, intrigued by Ayla's ways of taming wild horses and wolves. Others will become fierce enemies, threatened by what they cannot understand. But always the orphaned Ayla and the wandering Jondalar will heed the voice and vision that urges them on deeper into the dark and spectacular heart of an unmapped world. For they are driven to reach that place on Earth they can call home. Together they hold the future in their hands. It doesn't even really imply romance. Jondalar is an absurd name. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's cave people. They're supposed to be named, like, Ugg and Kronk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think they had enough syllables back but, then for that. <laughs> you know, were they really? <laughs> like, maybe they actually had bitchin' names. And we just... Yeah, we, we, we don't know, I guess. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> Uh, without being aware that she moved, Ayla was in his arms, feeling... Should I do this in a caveman voice? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Ayla was in his arms, feeling his strong embrace and his warm and eager mouth on hers. There was certainly no lack of, capital P, pleasures in her life. They shared the gift of the mother regularly with great enjoyment, but this moment was exceptional. I have no idea what gift of the mother the is. Gift of the mother. Gift of the, of the mother. Well, I would assume not. It is recording. We are officially recording. Oh, boy. <laughs> Continuing oh boy, oh right boy. where we left off. Yeah, right where we left off. <laughs> yeah, nothing's different at all. So. Do we explain the context? Who's going to explain what happened? I mean, I'll start. It's your show. I'll start. It's my show. <laughs> all right. So welcome back. Um, this is the role-playing portion of Born During Blumpkins, episode 69. Um, where were we? We were in the middle of reading a passage from that Anne Rice novel. We were in the middle of reading from the... We were going to get to the Turgid Caveman Dong. The Turgid Caveman Dong. Oh, that was a dong. good one. Right. Yeah. Okay, so... And we didn't get... Like, I think when the audio actually died, we had not gotten to, like... Um, I, me, was that the one where the word item was in it? Or, wait, was that in the, the honeymoon book that they called good it an question. item? This was, like, years ago already. <laughs> um, so, uh, the generator that we were plugged into died, and we were out of gas... So there's probably, actually, funny enough, there's probably still webcam recording, but just the audio will cut out, right? Oh, 100%, yeah, because yeah. the computer was still going, <laughs> yeah. so it's just going to get... <laughs> we'll just go quiet, so yeah. I'm sure that at this point you've just watched that. Um, so we did what any normal rational person would do. We packed everything into a trailer and drove it hundreds of kilometers away and set it back up. <laughs> hundreds of kilometers, maybe, maybe 150. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but... Here we are in uh, in our basement. Mm -hmm. in Welcome, fucking Calgary, Alberta. So yeah, so the uh, the GM uh, Brandon uh, had an incident where he got a lot of sand directly up his urethra. It was very. very it was it was hard to watch actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was clearly a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. But it was yeah. I, he has a self-destructive pattern, and it was like, you put all that sand in your urethra, and you're going to have a bad time. And then, like, by the time, you know, because he was, he was good to keep going when our power cut out, and by the time we packed up from the campsite, he was like, I have to go to a doctor. Mm -hmm. So that means that we have to pull an adventure out of our asses here. Mm -hmm. So this Much is this... like the sand coming out of his urethra. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the spirit of improv. Just make it up. 10 minutes before you got to do yeah, it. Yeah, so I, I, I wrote down some, like, poorly transcribed voice notes. Because this, this phone just cannot figure out, like, yeah, like I said, cosplay. Well, I guess, okay, I understand why it would write that as cosplaying. But, yeah, some very poorly rendered voice <laughs> notes here. I kind of want you to read the most terrible ones. Well, I, I can't do it now because we'll spoil it. But That's when fair. we get to the point in the game, I'll tell you what, what the note is and what the phone wrote. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. The 
premise of the game I said was, I didn't tell you much. I just said that you are uh, two like mu- electronic music festival archetypes. So do you want to kind of introduce your characters while I uh, bring my stool back up? Yes. Uh, this, this is going to be a, a repeating bit. Is It's not actually a bit. Is we For some reason, these bar stools on our bar, one of the hydraulic mechanisms is just kind of messed up. I feel like you guys are the only ones falling. No, it's just I'm me. Oh, it's Both just of okay. yours are fine. <laughs> like, I think that it, it drops to the same height. I feel like you could see it on the camera in real time. Anyway, as the host of this show, I will introduce your character first. Oh. Uh, the, which In which you will do with your okay. mouth and your words. Oh, I was going to tell you to get your pit vipers so you could both, oh, in character, wear the pit vipers. Oh, that's true. My, my character would not wear the pit vipers. Oh, okay. But from Neither the looks of the very large name that Tanner wrote that I was pretty close to guessing, <laughs> yeah, his Are character you... would. I Okay, I'm calling a judge. She's reading my character sheet. It's supposed to be a fucking secret. It's not a secret. We're about to spill off, man. <laughs> okay, you go ahead. Uh, like, I'm, okay, we're going into details here. Um, well, I, I would say, tell us what your name is, what you look like, and your general background. You don't have to like get into your yeah. stats and your inventory and stuff. That can kind of come out. Okay, should, should I do it in the voice too? Probably because <laughs> I mean, that's that'll, creative. You, you do prob- you. It'll probably make can... it better. Okay, so um, my name is Courtney. It's the name that was given to me by my single mother, and I want to honor that because that's what she gave me when I was born. But I'm actually known as Starseed Child of the Indigo Night or at Starseed on Instagram and TikTok. Wait, she got she got at Starseed? <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's actually pretty impressive, like on the ball. I know. Like as she, soon as a new platform opens, you're like, I'm getting Starseed on everything. She, Kelly, she Kelly, was hold the, on, Kelly. What? This this she's not real. <laughs> but I'm just enamored by the character. Like I assume that Instagram and TikTok are as real in this universe. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, she's got awful matted blonde dreads with grass, dirt, and flowers stuck in them. A very nice long yellow flowery, or sorry, a purple flowery sundress because she's an indigo child. Wait, is the word patchouli on your character sheet? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not, but it, I do have sage though. <laughs> Um, she's got super dirty bare feet with band-aids because she stepped on a rusty nail at one of the stages. Um, and, uh, she doesn't shave anything, anything at all. No judgment. No judgment. No uh, judgment. Uh, her back for background. I just, she's feminist as fuck. Burn the patriarchy. Mm. You wrote all of the rest of that stuff, not in the background panel. No, this is what she looks like. Oh, okay. Okay. I see. I see. Yeah. She looks like a feminist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she has no background. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's right. that's that. Cool. That's okay. yeah. That's Courtney. Well, I didn't write about my character's Instagram. Starseed. Star. Her friends Seed. call Excuse her Starseed. <laughs> All right. My character's name is Brad. <laughs> uh, he sure. Wears a black baseball hat, a black tee, and blue jeans. How did I know you're slender and stoic? Um, he's adopted. Has a very bland personality, and techno is the only interest or hobby he's ever had, and he's depressed. <laughs> I will give him credit for this. It's not Psytrance. <laughs> it's close enough. It's in the same ballpark. I mean, I, I believe you. They're all, it's, they Brad, all sound the same. Brad would not. Brad would kill me if I said that. But <laughs> like most... all the genres do sound the same, but somehow Psytrance is worse. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome because we just came from Inshallah, which is a very like, very Psytrance. Oh, I noticed festival. large representation of Psytrance. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that's uh, that's Brad. All right. He plays techno. Oh, is a DJ? Yeah. So I, I actually was like trying to think of the name, right? And I was I like, totally know you were gonna go for like the DJ playing route. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, I, I that's feel always like, like his name is Chad, isn't it? I feel like the low hanging fruit was like the Wook. I know, and I took that fruit, yeah, but I did it took, well. Yeah. See, I, I went a layer above that, Kelly. I don't yeah. know if it's above or below, <laughs> really. Okay. So. Uh, you two are at a unnamed music festival in Southern BC. Uh, oh gee, which one? Uh, it's like, uh, it's kind of near like a little sleepy mountain town and it's on like a big farm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you two are in the same. Woodstock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a Woodstock. Uh, you two are in a camp together. Uh, do, do you know each other? 
Ooh, interesting question. I would almost say no. I feel like our characters are pretty opposite. Yeah. I feel like it's more fun if you don't know each other. Yeah. You probably don't hang out in the same crowd. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're in the same camp. You're about to you're about to take a drug together. And Oh, here we go. Yeah. So I don't know. Like maybe maybe tell me like what the connection is. Like you have a mutual here or um, let's look. sister's friend or something. Like, yeah, some sort of family member or or, or a friend camp. of a friend sort of deal brought us into the same camp. Okay, well that person is there, and so is a guy named uh, Bearcat. He's like a, a pudgy guy with a big beard. Um, he he does like a whole thing where he'll walk around with like a sign that says like um free no not free hugs like hugs for we like we'll trade hugs for hugs that's what he does mm, right that's even worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying he's, to be clever he's got like extremely nasty dreads i probably know him yeah <laughs> and uh he's, he's excited he's got thing. he's got this like foil thing and he's like all right guys we're gonna try this new awesome thing acid out the door uh this is a sweet new chemical called lsz oh, why no. would you bring that up Oh no, this this is And everyone is taking a gummy in their hand and this everyone is, is really excited. <laughs> so um yeah, so you guys are about to take this. Uh, is there anything you want to do before you like pop it in your mouth? Um God, I, f- I feel like I want to know the context as to how we all got convinced to do it. Bearcat's very convincing. Sure. He's really stoked. He's like, I've been researching all these yeah. RCs. And like, yeah, so this one, it's basically like the same, but it's like it lasts a little longer. And it's kind of like a little stronger. And you just get like, yeah, it's just you, you get more of a vibe, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like oh, it vibes so you harder. the vibes, bro. Yeah. I'll just, I'll just draw on my personal experience of being convinced to do that thing. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, I, you, you, neither of you has ever heard of this substance, and uh, yeah. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna take the, the <laughs> this is too close to. I'm gonna take the gummy in my, in my hand, and like this, the, as the sun is setting, we're just, I'm just gonna sit there with it, and I'm just gonna put so much energy and just loving intention into this trip because I want it to be super magical, and like I want to just like learn a lot of things from it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I probably can envision Brad standing there and just internally like mocking the shit out of you <laughs> as you spend a lot of effort proclaiming all of that to the rest of us. I'm like <clears throat> I'm like half proclaiming, but I'm also just kind of sitting there with my eyes closed, just like like kind of like mumbling some like weird like speaking in tongue shit like. Yeah, yeah, putting on a show, right? <laughs> yeah. Whereas, okay. like, I probably just, like, at the halfway through Bearcat trying to convince me to do it, I'm probably just like, yeah, I'm doing it. And then no words are exchanged. I just grab the gummy, and I'm probably the first one to put it in my mouth. So you, like, you don't set an intention, you don't send energy. No. Okay. Nope. So what I'm having you both do is you're going to both, you're going to each in turn roll for vibes, like how good your vibes are. <laughs> And roll I think that fight. Callie's going to roll with advantage, and you're going to roll with disadvantage. <laughs> Do I roll all of them? Yeah, so roll both, and then you take the better one, and then he can, like, roll all four dice. And between the red and the white, like, whichever, yeah, so, like, what are the reds showing? There are three. They are. Yeah, three. And you're a five on white. Five. So your, your vibes are five. So maybe put, like, five marks on your sheet, because these are going to be important. <laughs> I grab my pen. Okay. Well, why don't, just roll for him. He's running away. <laughs> oh wait, I thought the, I thought the red was rolling for me. No, no, no. So she rolled. The reason I have four dice here is you can yeah. roll four dice, and then with advantage or disadvantage, you can tell which is which pair instead of having to roll twice. Just right. So the white one. is always advantage, and, and the red here. is always no, no, no. <laughs> no she you rolled. Roll. Just roll, but roll all the dice. Uh, okay. Right. There'll be a red number and a white number. You're gonna take the worst one. Three and eight. So you're three. Okay. I see. I see. I yeah. There it. you go. So I have a I, my vibes are three. Yeah. Red. Put them wherever you Three want. Vibe. All right. So here's what happens after you take it. So you're all kind of hanging around the camp and you like, you know, waiting to come up. Sun's going down and you're starting to notice like weird synchronicities, right? Like, um, like one person will like take their hat off and someone else puts their hat on, but they don't realize they're doing this. Uh, and what else happens? Like, you know, uh, one person, like every time somebody leaves the camp, like somebody else like shows up and you, you guys, you're starting to kind of notice this. And you're sitting next to each other, 
and uh, you're, you're kind of like, whoa, like, did this, did this just happen? Did that just happen? And at one point, you have this little conversation about a synchronicity, but then you have it again, and you have it again, <laughs> and it's starting to feel like you're stuck in a time loop. Oh God! <laughs> and after what, what after what I'm gonna guess is approximate here. Let me roll for it. Uh, infinity loops. <laughs> you finally, you finally say to each other, "Are we stuck in a time loop?" But you say it at the exact same time, and you just stare at each other in amazement at like, what happens now? And then, you start to notice around you reality kind of dissolving into like an infinite hexagonal grid, or like, no, not hexagons. You know how. Uh, on a soccer ball, like the grid is of like, I think it's like seven sided mm -hmm. because it's round. That's what you're seeing because reality is not flat. Ooh. You're seeing a soccer, infinite soccer ball pattern. And like the grid is made of brilliant white light and the grid itself starts to expand and the like negative space starts to shrink until everything, the reality just dissipates and everything is white and you're in a featureless void. You're, yeah, you're in a feature of this oh, that, 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 Okay, yeah. You're, yeah, you're well, I, I've been talking a while. Yeah. I thought I'd give you a chance to do something. Like, I don't know, examine your surroundings or... Uh, I, I examine my surroundings. Okay, are you are you good or bad at perception? Is that a strength or weakness? Uh, <laughs> oh, I am good at perception. Okay, so roll perception with advantage. What's, what's your better one there? They are the same. They are six. Okay, you got a six. So with a six, you notice that you're in a featureless void. <laughs> Dude, wonderful this is like we're in purgatory man well you only like, got a six you didn't realize that he's there oh like he's not even there he is there but you rolled a six so you don't notice this so what do you want to do real quick oh I, it's brad's turn it's brad's turn <clears throat> um well wait do I, I don't have to roll um well do you want to examine your surroundings or what are you gonna do just tell me what you're gonna do uh, <laughs> i feel like brad would just be like unimpressed all right <laughs> just like doesn't care yeah so you're unimpressed and eventually you you, you come to notice each other okay yeah so you see each other and you kind of hear like a faint hum in the background but it's not that perceptible yet do either you want to do anything or just kind of want to like wait and see what happens um i f i feel like like that 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 hum like it it totally sounds like this like singing bowl that my mother had growing up and I just I feel really connected to it so I think I kind of want to go check out where I think the like singing bowl is because like there might be people there that are like meditating to like find us you know because I feel pretty lost right now <laughs> am I nailing it or what <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's like you've met these people before <laughs> maybe well okay i'm confused are we in a featureless white void yes we are in a feature sorry white according void. to my notes a feature list <laughs> white void <laughs> oh that's awesome but we can tell like we can tell the direction at least that the sound is coming from like, if we yeah were it's to... getting a bit louder and on what where a horizon would be you're starting to see like a little blob are we looks walking like or are we like I don't, floating you haven't told you're you're in the middle of it you're not moving unless you choose to move. Yeah, but I mean, like, are our feet, like, do we, like... It do feels we... like you're on a floor, but you can't see one. Okay. Okay, are we aware of each other? Yeah, I think by now you've figured out each other here. Okay, so I'm, I'm in a featureless white void, and I look over, and I see... What was your name? Everybody Star calls Seed. me Starseed. Starseed. I see, yeah. I see Starseed. I think at that point... I don't know. I'd probably be like, I'm bored. Like, I, I probably wouldn't follow... I'd probably try to exit. <laughs> try to find the door. So you're walking like, away from her. Yeah, I try to find the exit. Okay, sign. no, no, no. But like, you need to understand. Like, look around you. There's like, there's literally nothing here. Yeah, there's no techno, so I want to leave. Okay, but like, just like, I just, I just need you to like, just like, put a little bit of trust in me. Just trust. We can just go. I just like pull out a cigarette and light it and just stare. <laughs> really like. So you have a, you have like a cigarette in your inventory? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> and a lighter. Cigarettes apparently. and lighter. Are those are two items. It was, sorry, the, the I, lighter's in the pack of smokes, so it's one. I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pack of smokes with with the lighter in it. Nice loophole. Yeah. I don't know if the categories matter. We know what it is. Pack of smokes plus lighter. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm not enthused, but I guess if if I haven't found the exit sign, I probably would follow Starseed because realizing that, you know, being that balls high, you just got to kind of go with it. So. Right. Okay, so you're not going to walk away from her. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll follow. I'll follow. Okay. So you're you're walking towards the noise. <laughs> so what you see um, it's actually kind of a familiar sight the closer it gets. Have you ever seen the Welcome to the Black Parade music video? <laughs> yeah. So you see a parade float and you see um, these like figures on it and they got these uniforms on and you, you kind of see the person in the, like there, you hear music that has like an MCR vibe, but it's not an actual song you've ever heard. It's kind of just sounds like, it sounds like five songs being played at once, but somehow it's perfect. And as it approaches, you get a good you get a good glimpse of the figure in the on the front of it, right? The oh my god, of, is it Gerard Way? It it looks like uh, it looks like Oscar Wilde cosplaying as Gerard Way. <laughs> so you see this figure. Hang on a sec. I have something for this. <laughs> the suiting up, suiting up. Sorry, I thought that was the Prince of Christmas. <laughs> well, that was last night. All right. So, yeah, he's got a jacket kind of like this, but like it's more of an entire suit deal. And uh, so, like, this thing comes louder and, like, the ethereal music... Sorry, the thing comes closer. The ethereal music gets louder. And it, it feels like the parade is, like, simultaneously coming towards you and moving away from you and, like, moving past you uh, until it finally it just seems to, like, converge on a single point and it's... The parade is just stopped in front of you, and the uh, they all the singing stops, and they all look very solemnly down at you. They're they're just like spitting distance away now. Do they like? Do they look sad? A bit. Well, mm, uh, why don't you roll for your perception? You have advantage on that, right? Yeah. All right. What do you keep hitting? The PlayStation. <laughs> uh, five. Yeah. So it, he just it looks very serious. They all look very serious. They're all just looking at you. Um, are they men? Are there women there? <laughs> so they all kind of have like an androgynous vibe. Um, the the person in front seems a bit male coded. Like like I said, just imagine like Oscar Wilde, like a very foppish dandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like wearing you know like a very like traditionally masculine suit, but you kind of suspect this person might like transcend gender. I mean, I'm, I'm I, I could be into that. <laughs> All right, do you guys want to do anything? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sensing your hesitation, the the person in the front finally speaks up. Hello, I am the Prince of Christmas. Oh <laughs> How are you both? Um, I I I mean, like we're I I think we're like a little bit lost. And we just need some, like, directions, I think, to get back. Also, I should also mention that she's, like, incredibly, like, unforgivably stoned at all times. Mm -hmm. So she's, like, super slow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Brad's probably just, like, just smoking a cigarette. and Just, just tweaking? Like, not, not even tweaking. Just, like, just looking for a way to just ditch this situation, you know? <laughs> just, like... What are you doing here? I sense that you're wanting to ditch the situation, Brad. <laughs> I wrote very high in my perception. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I'm afraid you cannot do that. Go ahead. Try and walk away. Okay. I invite you. All right. I just turn around and start walking away. All right. So you walk for what feels like eight hours and like you can hear them saying goodbye, eight goodbye. Hours. And like, and the, the voices kind of like slowly trail off behind you. After eight hours, you finally get like the... You know, the two medicines to look behind you. That's not what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> you get the two medicines to look behind you, and you haven't moved an inch. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Yeah. All right. I, and I for like, you, that felt like thirty seconds. I feel like that would start to become a slightly worrying situation. Oh, I sense you're worried, but fear not. <laughs> Do not be worried. No, 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 no. Well, okay. You may be worried, but fear not. I am on your team. So. I have brought you both here for a reason. He throws a lot of trill bars into like weird places. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Don't blame me. Blame blame the Prince blame of Christmas. Christmas. Yes, yeah, of course. So like he does have a mask. Or, yeah, I'm going to use he him because he does have a very masculine title. There might be a reason for it. 
He says, you two, do you know why both of you are here and not any of your friends? I mean, quite frankly, I'm just like, I'm just a little bit wary of the situation because I feel like I was brought here against my will by somebody with a very masculine energy. And I just really don't think that that is like cool because, you know, it's like it's 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 whatever the year is. It's, uh, I believe it's like current year. <laughs> it's it's like it's 2020. What fucking year is it? 2022. It's 20- <laughs> I'm so exhausted. You know it's, what? Just roll roll two dice and it's 2010 plus that year. It's 2017. All right, 2017. <laughs> yeah. Good year. Good vintage. Yeah. Was feminism even a thing back then? Dude, that was like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was getting there, yeah. yeah. I just I just I feel like I've been brought here against my will. And I just like I I I I don't I was not asked for properly for consent to have this experience and i just think that you need to recognize that and perhaps apologize perchance oh i do i must apologize for my extremely masculine energy i i I, i'm known for being the the most masculine of all the people in the heavenly uh, so like a man to brag yeah (laughs) but it's because of my uh, extreme take charge attitude that I have been entrusted with bringing you to this realm against your consent. Noted. But the stakes, the stakes you see are so high for- Oh, sorry, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat steak. <laughs> he just, he does not understand it. He just looks at you and he's like, oh, you're confused. No, I mean the, the, uh, oh, what's another word for steaks? The uh, the 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 prospects of what could go good or bad it's so earth shattering christmas is in peril <laughs> oh no do we um, have to save christmas you do oh you now your, perhaps your perception is better than i thought brad <laughs> i am i'm also not religious like i think that we're all just like a part of the same energy and like I just don't think that, like, Christmas is, like, respectful of other people's cultures, she says while twirling her dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you're very correct, but there's there's simply no time to get into an epistemological debate about Christmas. What you should understand is that there is a universal energy that uh, connects everything, but it's, 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 it's filtered to, through... Through and to you, via the lens of Christmas. <laughs> Some people have gotten it a little twisted, but the point is, if you don't save Christmas, the universal life force that connects us all will be shattered. Shit. And all of the <laughs> all of the crystals in your bathroom sink star seed will be useless. Oh fuck. <clears throat> yeah. That that gets that gets you going, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but because I do want to uh, respect the concept of consent, I will ask you: Do you take up the the the, the mantle of this 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 Im- very important duty? No one else can do it. I, it's only you, the two people with the most fucked vibes of this entire festival. <laughs> <clears throat> I think Brad probably jumps at the fact that he would get credit for it, so he's like, "I'm in." <laughs> Are you so okay? Okay, oh, I, I like. I just sorry. I'm like really stoned right now. I just need to kind of like recap what just happened. Like, are you saying, like, for real, real, like, no cap, that Christmas literally runs everything? That that is the best way to understand it with your tiny mortal brain, star. Straight bussin', no cap, sort of. Straight bussin'. Okay, and like, if we don't do this, then like, are people gonna like die or a fate worse than death? And in fact, I may not have the power to send you back to your plane. You may be in this featureless void forever. Do you like featureless voids? I mean, it's kind of peaceful. It reminds me of this one time that I went to Vipassana meditation and like hit this like crazy point of like kundalini that like i had never i had never reached before but i mean like i'm not familiar with kundalini is that one of those italian pastas it's delicious oh oh i love it you'll have to tell me more about it later but please please we are in haste there's no time to lose christmas is in peril now and we must start planning it now in july if people are gonna die i feel like i can't have that blood on my hands 
Let's go with that then. People are going to die, Starseed. <laughs> Well, thank you for using my chosen name. I really appreciate that. Oh, of course. I've already forgotten your normal name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, onward. He knows it's Courtney. He's lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he reaches into his jacket pocket and he throws three keys up in the air, kind of like between the two of you. And we have to grab keys before they hit the ground or what? It's your life. You I have you terrible agility and reaction. All right. So, uh, I, are I, you both going to try to grab I, yeah, them? Yeah, I try, but I for sure miss. I I try to grab all three. <laughs> I want you to both roll. Do you do you are you skilled or unskilled in that? Agility. You have agility? Okay, so you roll with advantage, you roll with disadvantage. Uh, oh, that's a 7. Yeah, you keep getting the second red one not on camera. Um, that is a 9. Okay. Um, so you you get two of them. And you get one of them, but you kind of like bump it and it like lands on the future's void ground, like right next to your feet. <gasps> Can I use this for ketamine? <laughs> he bumps. Oh, you, as soon as you like, <laughs> as soon as you look back, Prince of Christmas is gone. I'm going to use this for ketamine. All right. <laughs> Do you have ketamine in your inventory or? <laughs> no. Okay. It's probably for the best. You're already on like way too much LSA. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, when you pick up and examine the keys, so, um, let me just, okay, I'm just rolling to see which ones you have. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to start with your key. Your key has, it's the inscription on the, like the base of the key is, uh, like a really sad looking woman. Yeah. How big are these keys? Um, it's sort of like, I'm going to say this long, and the, this picture is about that like big. Like mm -hmm. It's kind of comical, but like you can still hold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's a very sad looking woman, and whatever that, whatever Starseed perceives as a sad woman is how it shows up in your eyes. Mm -hmm. If he looked at the, the key, it would look like his interpretation of that phrase. And then your keys are, it looks like uh, a bunch of tiny beings packed into a small space. Like they're almost like, fighting against each other for space on this key they're all yeah. a bit distorted and that's like one of the keys jam. i have that's one of the keys you have um and then the other one has a uh just like a dark robed hooded figure like it's just like sort of like a featureless black void in a robe look but you can tell it's staring at you somehow mm. is it like the baby dolls that like wherever you walk in the room they're always looking at you yeah, like when you put the key in your pocket, you feel like it's staring at you from your pocket. Gross. Ew. Yeah. Gross. And when you look up on the keys, I'll you realize two. that there are three doors in front of you with kind of like logos on them that match what's on the keys. Oh, no. Okay, so the puzzle has presented itself immediately. Um, all right. I feel like I would just sort of casually walk up, like, smoking all cool. I fucking I hate that smoking is cool. But... To which door? Well, to just get a you know get a good view of the logos on the doors they they match exactly what's on the keys oh they match exactly um, that'd be too easy the keys are also slightly different sizes and the door like lock so is it very obvious that each key matches each door and that's i would say that not yeah. that you, you can try to put another door okay so at this point i guess we have to choose which key to use first like do you think it's some like do you think it's something that's like like, obviously the keys match, but do you think it's like an order kind of thing? Well, if they obviously match and they are not intended for those doors, then there's, I don't know what malicious intent involved. Like, the puzzle is meant to be... Or as my phone would write it down, militia's intent. Like a militia. Apostrophe yes. <laughs> the intent of the militia. <laughs> Sorry, you were, on, you were on a whole thing there. Um... Is there more Old Milwaukee unofficial beer of the program? Yes, yes. there is. Uh, there's a fridge in the. Oh, you put them in the fridge. What an idea! I know. You, right? you guys deliberate for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So we're standing in front of the doors. Oh, I, I feel like Brad would just like want to vibe on this. Oh no, it's that one right that there. One there. Brad would want to like vibe on this and try and figure it out himself, but you're like annoyingly fucking talking to me and like making it hard for me to think. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, I would love one. Sponsored by Cal and Gary's. Sponsored by Cal and Gary's. <laughs> 
And cold millies. Now that we're actually in Calgary, mm-hmm. we can talk about how much money oh, co-op And the is Prince of us. Christmas suddenly like whips in out of the darkness and hands you old Milwaukee's and says, Hey, I have some old Milwaukee's. <laughs> Truly, you want to know the truth of the universe. They are the greatest the greatest of all the cheap beers. Please sponsor us. <laughs> Truthfully, the greatest of all the cheap beers. Oh man. Okay. He's gone again. <laughs> okay. Back to deliberation. Oh my god. Um I'm overthinking this. And Brad would be too. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like I take well the the key with the cramped A voice comes out of the void. Yeah, overthinking this. <laughs> oh, I would find that so annoying. <laughs> um I feel like there's there's two options in the keys that I have. I'm not interested in the key she's got. There's a whole bunch of people that are cramped together, and then there's a key with a dark figure on it. Yeah, like a hooded robe thing. Both of those seem like shit. Um, I think I would try the... I mean, Christmas is in peril. He's not going to have a good time. I think I would try the hooded robe one first. All right. And is it? I mean, like, is it like open the door and walk through it, or is it open the door and inspect? I, I would I would choose to open the door and inspect. Yeah, yeah. So you put the robe key in the robe door. I, I guess I would do that first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have taken initiative before her, so it definitely just happens. So you open the door, and inside this room, um, okay. Well, roll for your perception again. <clears throat> uh, okay. So I'll just roll the red dice. We've got six. Okay. Um. And this was the robe door, right? Yes. Um, you see at a distance a um, a large man uh, with a beard and big disgusting dreads, and uh, there's like a something looks like a sign next to him. Um, he he gets, has like a familiar vibe. A sign next. Is it bear, 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 bear beard, bear claw, bear, 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 bear cat, bear cat? You rolled a six, so I'm just describing what the person looks like from a distance. They're a bit silhouetted, um, and they're kind of like they appear to be like at a table. Is this like the merchant from Resident Evil? What are you buying? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Um, Could you have wares if you have coin? So we're in a featureless white void. And there's a door open in front of me that leads to something that is not a featureless white void. Yeah, like the... This is some Kingdom Hearts shit, man. Yeah, so like the the room, from what you can see, it like definitely looks like a room that has walls and a ceiling. And it's like... It, it seems really indoors. Like, it's... You don't see... You can't perceive what you would think of as, like, windows. All right. Probably I would slam the door and try the other door. Uh, Yeah, sure, why now, not? Now that I have, like, yeah. so, an idea... Is, is that the chair... <laughs> oh, you can hear it? Yeah. Yeah, it keeps making these these horrible fart noises. Like, is there an elk? And the chair is making horrible fart smells too. It's weird. <laughs> I was like, is there an elk dying like upstairs? There might be. <laughs> um, uh, wait, yeah. so hold on. So you have opened the first door. What do you do while he's doing that? Um like you have agency. You're a you're a modern woman. You can make choices. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I would like, especially just like from judging judging what the images of the key, it like touches my poor little feminist heart and it makes me think that there's like what like the image again it's like of a sad woman oh, i think yeah i thought you said poor little feminine heart and i'm like man you're kind of leaning into these like, no <laughs> okay sorry go ahead um and i i would have just like immediately gone because i think my like the line of thinking would be like there's there's like a woman in trouble in there or something so i would just go on like try and unlock it right away okay so you unlock it and uh what you see Inside is like a tranquil forest, and they're wait. Sorry, you you roll. You, I think your perception is advantage, yes. right? Yeah. We could have explained the game mechanics to the audience, but we didn't. Nine. Uh, everyone has picked uh, strengths and weaknesses. They have to pick one strength per weakness. All of their strengths they roll with advantage, meaning they roll two numbers, keep the best one. All their weaknesses they roll with disadvantage, meaning roll two numbers, keep the worst one. Can I do a quick little ASMR? Crisp. Oh, we love ASMR. <laughs> this, this is another motif. Do you want to make some weird mouth noises in the microphone? Oh, please don't. No, not one. No, no. Please. It's it's terrible. No, no, no. So with a, with a nine, you do hear that sound emanating. 
like faintly from this forest, but you see a tranquil forest and you kind of see some like, uh, some kind of like quadrupedal figures seem to be kind of like moving in the distance. And you hear kind of like a soft moaning. Like, did you ever play Left 4 Dead? No. No. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, for the audience, it kind of sounds like the way the witch like whines and wails. Honestly, when you say quadrupedal figures, the first thing I imagined was like the video of that girl that runs like a horse. <laughs> Have you ever is, this seen... like, is this like the the puppy girl play or like? No, she just, like she does like she literally just like runs around on all fours and like does like horse jumps and stuff. Like it's not the way that a human should move at all. Hmm. It's not that. Okay. With a <laughs> nine, you know it's not that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what you see. So you've each opened a door. You're slamming a door. He's walking to the other door. Are you going to walk through or? Um, because I am a starseed indigo child, I do want to make sure that one of my fellow humans, although he is a man, I do want to make sure that he's okay because now I kind of feel in charge of him. You like in charge for, uh, for his safety. Wait, are you talking about me? Yes. I, so I, I, I would have pegged you walking straight through that door. And I will I will leave the door open, but I'm going to... She would have like, pegged you if you asked. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave the door open, but I'm going to like, just kind of like, I'm not going to like go after him because I don't, sorry, I'm not going to go after him because I don't want him, you know, to think that like, I'm like worried or like bending to his will or anything, but I am just going to do like a little curious peek to see what he's up to and like what he's seeing. Okay. So you're going to watch him open the third door. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, so yeah, you open the third door and, uh, is your door still open? Yes. Okay. So roll with, roll your perception here. Just normal roll. Myself? Yeah. That's a nine. Uh, you see exactly what she saw. Wait, the door with the crowded bunch of people on it. Yep. I open it up and I see a forest. Yep. <gasps> Interesting. Do do I see that? Yeah, yet? you're both still seeing because if the door is still open, you're both still and you're both now seeing the forest, and it's like you're seeing from right. But like, do I know that that is what he's seeing at this other door? Because I'm kind of just if like, you craned your neck, yeah, you could probably see that. Okay, it kind of just looks like there are two doors literally next to each other in a wall, and they are both open to the same room. Okay, if we if we like both peer in at the same time through the different doors that are showing the same thing, what happens? Um, you notice that the other person is like three feet away from you. Like same as on the other side of the door. Yeah. Doors are like a so foot apart. It's... You lean in. Hey, you're right there. So it's like the same. Yeah. The same thing. It looks like two doors are the same room. Okay. And what was in the other door again? The first door. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Door. Do you remember Brad? <laughs> yeah, I do. It was a dark cloaked figure with long dreadlocks. Uh, I can't remember the rest, but it was a definitely an interior room. Okay, so you're telling me, so you're telling me that Christmas is in trouble. You're using that voice, but the Prince of Christmas is gone. I know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me that Christmas is in trouble, and something is making Christmas in trouble. It's but, up to you to solve it. But it's up to us to solve it. Yeah. But there's these like really nice, lush green places that we can just like go and hang out in. Yeah, I, oh, I it's, might, like a, it's like a wintry forest. Like, yeah, but I'm like all about nature. <laughs> I feel like I'd go back through the middle door, the uh, the first door that I opened, because it fits well, my aesthetic. Door. Okay, it fits my aesthetic, <laughs> right? All right, you're just going it. You're dude in your way through. You just walk yeah, in. I'm gonna I'm gonna like walk straight up and probably just like wait wait. You're gonna open the third door right now? I, I guess oh. I closed it, didn't I? The, yeah, uh, you can open it again. Yeah, I'm gonna open it. Okay, again. you open it again and you see the snowy landscape. Oh no. This is we fucked up. <laughs> very confusing. Like sorry, like the the same forest. Wait, 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 wait. I step out <laughs> and close my door and open it again. You just close the one door and open it again? Yeah. It's trees. I do it to all of them. Okay, you you close all the doors? Yeah. Okay, then what do you open? All of them. Which one do you open first? The one that he opened that didn't have the shadowy figure. Okay, so now you open that door. Okay, roll your perception when you open that door. Nine. Okay, so you see... Um, it kind of looks like you're looking in on, like... It's, it's a very busy area. There's a lot of living beings in there. Um, there's a lot of, like... 
no, sorry. You're looking at like the outside of a building. There's a lot of little figures huddled around it and like muttering and kind of yammering and like a, a, a tongue you can't quite understand. Uh, and the voices are like, they're they're on like the higher end of the register. And yeah, they they seem like, they seem troubled. Okay, I close all the doors and open them all again. <laughs> it's like, how long can we keep this going? <laughs> uh, and that's the and the other the other two are still all naturey. If you close oh, shit, oh no, he just peeped. It's all good. If you close your door, and then and then you open another one, you will see what was originally in it. But there's no more. There's no more black figure. No more, if you close all the doors and open that third door on the far right, then you see the 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 the, the silhouetted large person with the beard and the nasty dreads that is like still hunched over the table. Okay. Nothing in any of the doors has changed. It's just when you leave a door open and you open a second door, it's just the first open door takes precedence. It's not a puzzle. <laughs> it seems like a puzzle. It seems like a puzzle. <laughs> no, it's things just were that. changing as doors were opening, so it seems like a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> the first door you open is what shows through everything. Once you close them all, it's whatever you open first. Okay. Okay, so it was a puzzle. So you you, 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 you suddenly, uh, uh, the Prince of Christmas comes to you and by again, it's like, I promise you, the doors are not a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I probably like get snarky and look back at him and it's like, look, I've seen Star He's gone. Trek the next generation. He's gone. I know who fucking Q is, all right? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is, this is bullshit. <laughs> um okay well we should we should just pick we should just pick a door yeah i mean i i was planning... this is metagaming but you should pick a door <laughs> <laughs> i was planning what i what like what, when i went back to the door that i originally opened yeah i was expecting to see that dude with the dreads yeah hunched over the table and you said that it was just yeah trees. but that's because the trees door was still open okay, when you so did the experiment of closing all the doors <laughs> and then you open that third door it does show that is thing. that not a puzzle <laughs> No, I don't think so. Oh God! It's just you can't my see two different to, things at my once. My intention was to go through that door and to meet, meet that person. Okay, well, if you, if you close all the doors and you open that door, you see that thing. Do you want to walk through? Yes. All right. As soon as you walk through, all of the doors and everything <laughs> fall away, and you're just both in that room. You are in like a kind of dungeony looking room, and you now that you're in the room, um, you can see that this. Um, you're a little mistaken in the dreadlocks. What you're actually seeing was like a kind of a pointed hat with like a little bobble on the end. Uh, and he's, yeah, we're in the kind of like a red suit and <laughs> fucking Santa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty Santa looking figure, but like the most haggard, bedraggled Santa you've ever seen. Prison Santa. <laughs> Prison yeah. Santa. Well, you're also noticing that like he's hunched over the table in a way that he's like chained to it. Oh, God. And he's kind of like he seems to be weeping softly. Okay. Uh, this one's on you. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. So okay. you can uh, workshop that for some time. <laughs> Brad's taking a smoke. No, Brad goes to piss in the corner, like literally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a chamber pot. Does, do, does Santa notice us coming in? It doesn't seem like it. Like, I mean, he's kind of like, he's he's facing kind of away from you. And he's chained to this table. He can't really move. He could maybe turn his head, but he's not. He's just kind of staring straight ahead and like weeping softly. Uh, I would probably just like walk up pretty concerned and just like kind of start like oh hi jack start like rubbing his back a little bit and be like hey man like you 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 doing all right like he just kind of shakes his head while continuing to sob and goes oh 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 <laughs> okay i can tell there's something wrong because that is literally the reverse of what you're supposed to be saying <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You're very perceptive. You notice he doesn't seem to be having a good time. Um, I have sage in my inventory, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a lighter. Brad, can I can I borrow your lighter, please? Yeah, I guess. Um, and I and I light some sage and I start smudging. <laughs> he starts smudging. Uh, the the there's a door to this room. And it bursts open, and you see like a cloaked figure walk in, and it, it looks exactly like, uh, like just kind of like the way you perceive like a grim reaper. Uh, it's 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 basically, and the voice sounds like Norm Macdonald, so like it's it's exactly like, <laughs> I can't do that voice, but that's what it sounds like. Yeah, Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Yeah. So he's like, 
Oh no, wait, it doesn't sound like Norm MacDonald because it has a voice. The the voice the the hooded figure goes like, hey, "What are you doing? Why are you burning this in my dungeon? Who are you?" Um, sorry, I just I'm I'm clearing the evil spirits. No, I am an evil spirit. I don't like this. Yeah, so that's like kind of the entire point of this exercise, and I just need you it's if you could just close your eyes for a second and just take some deep breaths. There's some things that need purging in this room. Uh, okay, so he he reaches out, um, like he walks up to you, and he like reaches out a robed hand to go touch your sage, and as soon as he touches it, it just like wilts and turns into ash. No sage. Well, we no sage Christmas. in my dungeon. Um, Jack, I need you to kindly fuck off for a sec here, bud. Cat is also evil spirit. Don't mind him. Who? Wait, what? The cat. The cat is also oh, yeah. an evil spirit. Don't mind him. <laughs> there is a, there's a cat in this dungeon. It is cuddling you, but it has like bad vibes. Bad like you look, feel like it's gonna. The vibes of you him. feel like you feel like the cat would claw you as soon as you stop paying attention. You're stuck with this cat now. Well, I'm now just crying about the loss of my sage that I collected myself from a beautiful forest off the highway somewhere. So so as you're as you're crying, uh, the hooded figure um, takes Santa's belt and pulls it off and like pulls Santa's pants down like to the bottom of his ass and takes the belt and just starts whipping. And it's like, this is what happens. This is what happens, Mr. Claus. You this you you don't give me my money, this you get punished. You understand? And Santa's just going, oh 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 oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Listen, are you here to help with punishment, or are you just here to be annoying? Um, <laughs> I think I think Starseed's having flashbacks of why her mother is a single mother. Oh my She's God. just remembering the belts getting brought out, and like just kind of like crumbles, and like doesn't really know what to do. Okay, so you just got like a freeze response to yeah, all this. Yeah, okay. yeah. Brad is just like starting to regret even being involved. <laughs> just does not want to be a part of this. All right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the um, the after like what, several minutes of whipping the uh, hmm, what is what does the road figure do? I took I had like two hours to come up with this. Okay, so <laughs> the the road figure like walks over to a wall and gets like. Okay, like what's a Christmas themed thing? Trees, reindeer, lights, snow, gingerbread, uh, skating. Um, hmm. Fruit cake, pumpkin pie. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So he goes and gets a gingerbread man, right off the wall. Goes and gets a gingerbread man. Um, and he takes a big bite out of the leg. And Not the and Santa goes oh and like his leg starts like spasming and he's in like intense pain. Uh, Christmas voodoo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and the uh, and the hooded figure is just like yes, yes. This is how we this is how we break kneecaps in the ethereal plane. I like how the evil dude is just Russian. Yeah. <laughs> Topical. <laughs> it's just a voice I can do. <laughs> Okay. I'm 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 still I'm in I'm in like freeze mode. All right. Um yeah, so what else does he do? Um he oh, so he walks up to the front of Santa and he says, "You don't like when I hurt you. You don't want me to hurt you anymore." And Santa goes, "No, oh, oh, oh." And he's like shaking his head. And he says, "Okay, then it's your turn." And he like sticks the uh other leg of the gingerbread mouth in Santa's mouth and like forces him to bite it. And the same thing happens where where Santa's other leg starts like spasming and he's just like the most intense pain and like you almost just like it seems like his legs are like withering as this happens. This got dark. Yeah. Well <laughs> that'll happen. <laughs> Careful what you take, kids. Yes, this is a PSA. This is, this is just a public a cautionary tale. Yeah. To yeah. not ingest research chemicals. I mean, I don't really have anything to like. <laughs> in my inventory, I put sage and rolling papers. <laughs> so you have rolling papers, but you have no. So that um, the okay. So the hooded figure notices that you're still there and is like, "Listen, I I don't have time for this. You, why don't you just leave? The door is over there, and the uh, yeah. If you if you don't leave, I won't use my uh, evil anti pope powers on you. Anti pope? I say I am the anti pope. <laughs> I am anti Pope Constantine. Okay, um, I'm kind of into that. <laughs> what? 
Um, yes. Anti-religion, people, just spirituality only. People don't realize it, but there's all there's usually an anti-pope. Sometimes it is less public. I have an uncle pope. Bad? He, no? He no. also just stares at you and doesn't understand. You're like, oh, no, you don't understand. You see, <laughs> anti-pope means anti. Sorry, is my accent. But the it, it just means that I am, like, seated in opposition to current pope. And I have, you know, big conflict with church and also with this man who owes me money. I don't know why I'm giving you all this expository information. I have I must torture him. And then, uh, yeah, so he goes and he gets, like, a, a Christmas tree. And Santa's going, go! <laughs> this is like the most intense trip that I've ever had. Like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you guys gonna do anything or? I, I like, I'm just like, I'm like frozen. Like, I don't even know how to okay. respond. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have nothing. I have nothing in my inventory that I can help. I. Maybe if anything, I'm like really stoned and notice the cookie and like accidentally take a bite, forgetting what it did. <laughs> I, Brad, what part do you take? What, what part of the cookie do you take a bite? Just out like of? a little bit of the hand. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the as you take a bite out of the hand, you just watch like blood start like showering out of Santa's arm, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh!" What you just like? But it's also getting more faint. It just feels like he's just like. He doesn't even have the life energy to like scream anymore. Almost. Oh my god! I think I just realized something. Listen, listen, Brad. Chad. So was it Chad? Oh my god! It's Brad. Brad. Sorry, I smoked a lot of weed. Um. Anyway, like none of this is real. You Dad, know, it's Christmas. Yeah, like Christmas. Like none of this is. Like, I'm just gonna eat this cookie. I'm. It, I'm just, I'm just, I eat the cookie. I eat the whole fucking thing. Brad, okay. Brad, Brad just like <laughs> looks at you disapprovingly. Like he's like, this is clearly a stupid idea, but does not say a word. Just lights another cigarette. I see. I see the look of disapproval and it makes me eat the cookie even faster. So when you, as you were eating the cookie, the like Santa starts to scream, but also like wither and shrivel and is becoming like a husk. And what the anti-pope uh, Constantine like he starts realizing you're doing this because he, he has kind of low perception he was really focused he was he was in flow right he's in a flow state of torturing Santa <laughs> um <laughs> yeah and so he uh realizes what you're doing that you're like he's like oh my god what are you doing no 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 I need him alive I need to get money back and he's freaking out because like he tries to grab it from you and the cookie's gone so he flies into a rage and um he's gonna just reach out and like he's just gonna like put his like robe hand up to your neck and like grab your neck and i'm strangely into it oh so you're not you're not gonna like do anything <laughs> counter you're just gonna nope all right i want to i want you to uh <laughs> roll one what how many what's your vibe score five okay i'm just gonna roll here okay so you lose four vibe points you're down to one. Oh fuck Yo, how the fuck is that like my HP? Starseed. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So you kind of like fall to the ground, writhing in in pain, and you feel like you suddenly feel like all the pain Santa felt. You feel it in both your legs. You feel it in your butthole, and <laughs> like nothing's ha- like. Yeah, you're you're shriveling a little, but you're you're still alive. I would um, like to add also that she probably starts hearing a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. No relation to personal experience. No relation to personal experience. <laughs> yeah, no. Any resemblance to any like real people or experiences. And the wasp sound just like keeps echoing and echoing and echoing for eternity. Yeah. 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 You definitely hear some like you know like cartoon characters see stars around their head. <laughs> you're hearing you're hearing wasps around your head, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So the um the 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 roped figure does kind of like walk over to a wall and he grabs like a big green reaper scythe and he's like oh you you're going to regret this you're going to be next 
But he's like walking really methodically, like the T one thousand. Like he's, you know, <laughs> he's not running with purpose. Yeah, so he's walking over to the wall. He's and, walking towards a big scythe on the wall. And there's there's nothing else in this room. It was just like oh, a, there's a lot of implements of torture. There's the door that he was saying like you can leave if you're not gonna if you're gonna annoy me. How far away is the door? Um, I would say it's like if he's walking towards like that wall and you're sitting like here, the door is just kind of like there where that hallway is. And how withering am I and how far away is he? I, he's like, kind of standing right, I would say. Well, where, did you go stand in a corner to smoke or do you just stand right there and do it? Stand right there. Yeah, so he's just kind of standing over you and you kind of, you know. Like, when you say he's walking methodically, is it like a comical, like, zombie walk? Like a like a very slow, like, hey, 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 like, you know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, are we close enough to the door that we could just fuck off? You could try it. I, would I have to be dragged? Like, how injured am I? Am I? Am uh, I, super I think you could get up. up. Like, you got adrenaline. I feel like you got it. Well, I mean, unless unless you're really into that freeze response, you might just lay in the ground if that's how you react. I have to no danger. agility. I have no intelligence. And I have, don't have advantage. But I I'm shitty at them. Yeah. So you could try oh, to do. Oh, those. but I'm very resilient. You're resilient. Yeah, I picked that because I figured she probably does a lot of drugs. Okay, and, like, so I'm gonna roll a disadvantage yet. on your. Okay, so you wait. How many? points to say you lost four i have one point left yeah. you had five to start yeah okay well okay rolling with disadvantage you still only you still lost four so yeah. um yeah so what you, you want to try to do something yeah i think we'll just try and leave yeah all right um so roll with uh yeah roll your agility with disadvantage i guess six you got a six all right. Uh, do you, what are you gonna do in this like moment? Brad's probably standing there, just like he knows this is not real. <laughs> so he's just like, whatever, come at me, bro. Okay. Um, so I would say that, uh, like, you get to your feet, um, but by the time you get to your feet, he's uh, he's like looping over you with the scythe. He's like, "Are you going to leave? Is it what's happening?" Yeah. Uh, so he kind of just like smokes you with the flat of the scythe, and he's like, "Get the fuck out!" I, I do that. Right. That happens. Yeah. All right, that happens. So you you start walking towards the door, and he's like, "Hey, you, fuck boy, what's fuck your boy. deal?" I should have named my character fuck boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's my deal? Um, I don't know. I'm probably just looking him in the eyes. Just like I don't know, you can't hurt me. You're not even real. All right, he hits you with the he swings a scythe at you. <laughs> okay, um, um, so I don't even dodge. Do you, do you have an agility? I am. A, yeah, I do have agility advantage. You don't dodge though. I don't dodge. All right, so <laughs> okay, so he does two da two vibes damage to you. Are you also down to one? Yes. <laughs> All right. So he's he's mad now. He's just really mad. So he starts walking toward you and like trying to chase you out the door i'm like crawling away like army crawling all right um he kicks you in the ribs it hurts but it doesn't like yeah it, do it doesn't do any more damage to you he walks over to santa to see if he can like reanimate him somehow <laughs> but i've eaten necromancer? him yeah um, he's, he's a withered husk but like you know the 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 anti-pope is a bit stunned by this he was not expecting you to kill santa <laughs> So he's kind of like stunned and he's just like thrown for a loop. I kind of just figured that like if I just ate the cookie and killed Santa, then that just like eliminates the problem. Well, I'm sh like Brad at this point, he's just like realizing that he actually not not experiencing physical pain, but experiencing a diminishing vibe. <laughs> and he's like, this is bullshit. So did you say Brad like he's slender, like he's not like a built dude? No, okay. he's slender, stoic. You're no, but you're now like you're now like dangerously skinny looking because you, you've withered a bit. Yeah, but I feel like he would just like turn around and be like, "This is bullshit," and knowing that this w is not real, it's just like a plane of imagination and hallucination. I just turn around and like full out, like Kamehameha, <laughs> like Eldrick blast towards the motherfucker who just hurt me. Okay, so you're you're gonna go attack him. Yes, I'm gonna attack him. All right, so the moment you cross the threshold of the door, you find yourself back in a featureless white void. Just at the thought of attacking? Uh, no, like as soon as she crossed the door. Away. As soon as she crossed the threshold, you're both in a featureless white void. That third door is gone. Two more doors. 
Jesus. I want to go to that nice place. <laughs> I guess, yeah, fuck Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I already killed him. I, I so like... uh, you, you hear the Prince of Christmas roll up. How have I already forgotten the Prince of Christmas is voice? Right. What? You killed Santa? Don't you understand? That's not saving Christmas. That's the opposite. Why would you kill Santa? I was really hungry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you bought the wood. Let me. Okay. It it may still be possible. You just. You need I can to... make myself throw up. I do that on ecstasy like all the time. Great. So. <laughs> So you you know what I say, mean when I say you need to save Christmas. You could, like Santa is a key figure of Christmas, right? He needs to deliver the presents. Now someone else is gonna have to deliver the presents. What what, what like what's your day job? Uh, <laughs> well, just you're, pass the to buck. be fair, like you're the one that's like super overly concerned about what's happening here. So I feel like if anybody is like bound to do it, it's probably listen. It. I really want to send you back to your reality, but I may not be able to if if Christmas isn't saved. <laughs> Please try to do better, and he vanishes. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I I I use the lighter and I light myself on fire. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm sorry. we do have to go to bed. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you light yourself on fire, and um, like 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 the monk style. And now we're still high as balls in a white void <laughs> yeah so you set yourself on fire and uh it it kind of snaps you back to the reality and you wake up in a sort of like safe space tripping balls and on fire sanctuary and uh yeah in and like sanctuary you start on fire. screaming and this snaps brad back to reality and uh oh, yeah you, you were both <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> uh yeah you both snap back to reality and uh you <laughs> <laughs> and you're both screaming and they have to like get water to put you out um so you're oh, like horrible on fire i'm actually like on fire yeah you get some pretty severe like third degree burns they gotta take you to medical she lit her dreads on fire yeah and um you're high for another like i don't know that was about like an hour and a half of time and oh so God. that sounds about right yeah you're gonna be high uh, that's what it another says 34 and a half yeah hours. you got about another 34 and a half hours <laughs> of like tripping <laughs> but yeah and you're, you're so you're tripping in medical and you're you're you maybe eventually get back to your camp and you're trying to just tell people about like yeah so like there was there was a prince of christmas <laughs> and like it, it like it's all it's all real to you now and um <laughs> Yeah, and then you got a cool story for your scars. And uh, six months later, uh, no, five months later, Christmas happens. Um, but, like, it's just, like, the worst Christmas ever. Like, you don't get as many presents as you expect. Y you have a real bad Christmas. And then that was Christmas 2017. And they get, like, incrementally better again over time. Things okay. kind of normalized. All right, all right. And, uh, yeah, and then you suddenly hear uh, a dramatic swell of music. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wandering <monkeys. laughs> That's right. That's what we call it. <laughs> well, that was some of the stupidest shit. <laughs> I honestly didn't know if my talent was going to come in useful, but here we are. I I have no idea how to GM, so this is just this is just what I, happened. I was are still recording. Um, we are. I mean, do you want to like plug your podcast or something or your we streaming? Have, we are not podcasting right now. We're barely streaming. I, right now. I can't in good conscience plug my podcast because I stopped paying for SoundCloud Premium, so it's not hosted anywhere. It is All currently right. unlistenable. Do you have any uh, parting words for the audience? Um, have a blumpkin save a baby oh yeah and if you're not aware what a blumpkin is just go ahead and google that and have a nice day reading that on Urban Dictionary okay. you can read that on Urban Dictionary or listen to the uh, erotica that was read earlier yeah do just, that. just Chuck Tingle I mean, to be fair I've never read a Chuck Tingle book well, we're gonna have to now I really should how about you what do you got for Watch the show that you're currently watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
a self, a shameless self plug on the self plugging the thing that he's plugging himself on the show that you are currently watching. Yeah, you should so do that. If you haven't subscribed to Patreon, and if the Patreon is not really good, it's time to convince Kelly to make a Patreon and then subscribe to that Patreon. I, <laughs> see, my plan was to get viewers and then get a Patreon. <laughs> Do I have to, is it like Field of Dreams? You have to build the Patreon and they will come? Yeah. Is that, oh wait, are we still talking about the erotica? I, but I'm, I now just imagine someone like jacking off to watching us read erotica. Like that's their king. There, there are people. I want, like, my king is people irony reading erotica. Irony reading? Well, I mean, that was what we were doing. Right? Yeah. We weren't trying to like read it to get aroused. Yeah. But people are aroused by the irony. When we're talking about tight buttholes and free cum, like it just it gets, it gets the people going. Tiny anuses. Tiny anuses. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having us. Tiny anuses. That's us. Hope you liked my show. Tiny anus. <laughs>